Well, hello, and welcome back to Ready Steady Play. I feel almost bad interrupting this wonderful soundtrack, so this music you're hearing is in fact the official Sleeping Gods soundtrack. Uh, Red Raven Games got back to me, Brenna at Red Raven Games emailed me and she said I was welcome to use it for the show. So the good news is we've now got the official soundtrack playing, and I think this is available through their store, I think. Well, I should have looked that up, but it is, I think, available for purchase if you like it. So if you like what you're hearing, you can always check that out at their website from Red Raven Games. Hey, I've got Toby and, Heg and Difter in chat. Hey guys, how you doing? Yeah, it's time for more Adventures in the Wandering Sea. I'm excited. I'm excited to get back to this. I actually, um, I played Above and Below earlier today as well with Leanne. And um, I forgot how much I enjoy that game. I mean, it's got some serious flaws, but I absolutely love it to bits. Um, it's, I never, never regret my time spent playing that game. I do have just a few notes before we get started. These were some comments left on the first video from a chap called um, Alec Bock, or Alex Bock, and he said, um, correction, you can do the ship actions in any order. So I think I said in the second stream, when we were doing the ship actions over here, oh, let me get my camera. Ooh, camera. Don't fall over, camera. We've got work to do. So I think what I said was that uh, when you, for example, take the quarters action here, you have to take the card first and then the command points, and then you do the thing where you remove the two command points from the cards or from wherever they've been spent. And that's not true. You can actually choose to do uh, the three things in any order that you want. So that is a correction. Um, so play that correctly going forward. And the... Hello. Hello. And the other thing I've got here is that, uh, yes, he confirms that you can use two gray cubes per combat. So thanks for that, Alex. We did figure that out. I did remember that in the end. He said something about the challenge rules, which I didn't quite understand his comments. So I double checked the rules for challenges, and it looks like we've been doing them all correctly. So that's all good. And finally, he mentions that when you do put out fatigue tokens, you shouldn't just put one. You shouldn't flip the existing one face up. You should put one token face down and one face up because of the way the game is saved. It's a good habit. And that's absolutely true. So when you um, actually save the game in the official manner, what you do is you just put all of your characters in individual bags. So I've just been basically leaving it sort of set up and just moving it away from my desk when I need to work. But if you're plopping a character in a bag, you just shove their board with all the tokens into a single bag and that's sort of how you save the character's statuses with all their various tokens. Of course, if you've got fatigue tokens, you won't really easily be able to remember whether the token was face up or face down. So you want to put two tokens there, one face up, uh, down, and the second token the character receives if they fatigue twice, face up like this. And then you'll have two tokens in the bag to remind you that they've got two fatigue tokens. So that's a very good point. So thanks for those comments. And now we're all ready to get started sailing again. I just got to remember what on earth we were doing. I remember um, I've got this sea serpent out here still still uh, plaguing us. And we've got um, these mysterious pillars that we were investigating. <sighs> we've got some uh, damage over here on Kanan. We've got damage on Raphael. And Marco's actually currently... Oh, Gregory's also quite poorly damaged. So things are going okay. Got quite a lot of little tokens out here as well, covering up all these spots. So maybe heading over to the bridge is actually a good place for us to go right now. We do need to do a strength action, I think, at some point to get rid of this sea serpent because they're going to be causing a lot of damage otherwise. I've got this engagement card here, engaged card here on Raphael, so this is going to help help us. Yeah, trying not to sink the ship is exactly right, because that's what we're trying to do. Hopefully there won't be any allied planes to sink me this time. Alright, what have we got here? Oh, the Crypt of Thorns is right there. I don't think we should be doing any dungeons, though. Not good enough yet. Okay, so we did the Forest Isle bit. I need to update my little map here as well. I've got all my notes and stuff here. And... Gotta try to remember just exactly what on earth we were we were doing on the uh, 
what notes have and have not been resolved on the map here. Because I've got... The, these are all the dungeons that I've circled here. That's not a dungeon. That's the diving suit we need for that. We need some keyword called iron there. And up here we need another keyword. We need to figure out the actual song to sing at this pillar. If you guys remember, there's a little story there as well. But there's also some something else we're searching. There's actually a keyword in Lynn's Grove, which was, I think, uh, is it 120 we did? Or, yeah, I think it was 120 we did. I think that was actually Lynn's Grove, and there's a keyword in there that I'm searching for. God, good thing I remembered that. This is why I can't take too long breaks between this game, or I won't be able to remember anything of what I was doing. But this uh, forest isle here, this business has been resolved, because that was part of the pan adventure and we did that. Other than that, I don't think I have anything too, uh, too exciting to be exploring. So, I suppose our next exciting adventure should take us to... Well, probably somewhere where we can maybe heal up a bit, I'm not sure. In any case, we'll start by visiting the bridge. So we can draw a card, we can gain two command points, and then we can clear off all of our boards. We might as well, seeing as we can choose any order, we might as well clear the boards first. And draw a card. So we've got bandages here. Instantly restore two health to a crew member. That's good. It's also a one, so it's good to get that out of the deck. And two command points as well. Right, now I think wasn't our intention to go and visit one of these two temples here. I should really be crossing these places off as I visit them. but uh, Or at least somehow marking the ones I've visited. Oh god, I haven't marked any of them though. I haven't marked any of them at all, so... Oh, I did. I marked off some of them. I marked off the ones where bad things happened and it felt like they were just kind of resolved. But I should really mark off all the places I've been. I think if you're playing this with someone else, it might be good to give someone like in charge of the map and be like, you be the note taker and the navigator. You know. Hey, for my invader, thanks for joining. Um, thanks for watching part two as well. Glad you could make it. And yes, good time, exactly right. <laughs> Maybe you remember what I was supposed to be doing. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is an event card. And I'll think about where I'm supposed to go while we resolve this event card. What do we got here? Flying debris. During a windstorm, a tree branch lands on the deck, hitting Kanan. Gain one vegetable, and Kanan takes two damage. Oh no, well that knocks him out cold. This is just resolved as well, so... A vegetable. It wasn't just a tree branch, it was a giant broccoli. Cool. Alright, so if I remember correctly, when a, when a character takes damage, the excess damage, this is definitely when enemies attack in combat. I don't know if this actually applies to events like this, but um, I didn't read anything about it at all in the rulebook. So I don't know actually if the excess damage would spill off or if it just... Uh, because I was looking to see if you could assign more damage than they have hit points. But um, I didn't say anything in the rulebook about that. So if anyone in chat knows, let me know. Um, I know in combat, when you take a 5 damage hit, you have to deal all of the damage to one target, but any excess damage is spilled over onto another target. Um, I don't know if that's the case for non-combat scenarios. But we'll just pretend it is, because I, I haven't found anything else to that effect. So we'll put a damage down here on Laurel. That's the, uh, the fifth damage, or the, the second damage from that card. Okay, so we're, we're not in great shape, but we can definitely afford to do a bit of cooking, because I've, I've fixed the cookbook. So I think we should start by doing some cooking. Um, Let's go ahead and cook this spicy gumbo for one discount. And that gets rid of three fatigue. 
Although I only actually have two, but that's fine. Um, and three hit points. So let's uh, bring back Kanan. I actually think... Is it better to bring back... Let's, uh, let's take two off of Kanan and one off of Marco. I think it's probably better to... Uh, to heal someone as fully as possible, but I think it's probably... I mean, I think it's better to do a huge chunk of hit points and then um, tr and try and heal someone fully than it is to sort of heal everyone a little bit. Although I think if they're on five damage, it is better to try and bring them back to four just because then they can participate in checks, tests, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we've got two ship action, uh, two regular actions. And I'm quite tempted to go and explore one of these pillars. And I can't remember which we'd said we would look at. I know that we resolved 158 already. Did I mark that on my map? I did not. There we go. Marked off. No reason to go back there, I don't think, right now. So. I don't have any real indication about which one of these I should be going into. So I guess let's just pick 85 and see what happens. Um, before we go in there, actually, do you know what I will do? I'm going to... I'm going to use the bandage. And I'll use the bandage on Gregory, because that increases his savvy, and it'll heal him twice as well. And he's on five also, although he can take six. So, that's good. We can actually... There we go. Now he's a savvy master. So I put this one down below because this is his level up, actually, rather than an ability card. Okie dokie. And now we go exploring 85. So we'll go ahead and take one of these command tokens from our engaged um, special ability card down here. And we'll get to... A story. Story time. This is so much thicker than the storybook in in Above and Below. <laughs> I think I have both the storybooks for that game, and they're not as uh, neither of them are as combined. I think they're maybe half the length of this. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Two bull's horns are carved into the stone above the pillar's double doors, which stand wide open, inviting. Mac places a hand on your shoulder. Careful, she says. The bull's horns are the symbol of Orphash, god of Mythens. So we can enter the pillar or return to the ship. So I guess we go into the pillar. <clears throat> the doors swing shut behind you, closing with a definitive crash. Torches burst to life along the walls, revealing a recessed arena that takes up the whole base of the pillar. You can just make out tiered balcony seating in the gloom above you. The audience seats are empty, but a number of mythons wait for you at the bottom of the arena. They brandish their weapons with threatening sneers. You find an ancient arena and a group of mythons prepare to fight. So we've got fight the mythons, and I don't think we have the other option. No, we don't have the keyword, so our only option is to fight the Mythons. <clears throat> this is literally our only option. We can't even flee or return to the ship. So I guess we're in a fight now. The Mythons let out a guttural raw cry as you enter the arena, weapons drawn. So we're going to enter combat, and before I forget, I'm going to take two command points thanks to the singing necklace. Because I'm probably going to need them. Okay. So if you guys remember, Mythons are the uh, the half bull people that we fought in the very opening of the introduction of the game. So these ones are probably after some revenge, I think. Because we did uh, res steal their prisoner, Mac. And I guess we killed their friends? I don't. I try not to think about it like that. But uh, I suppose that is what happened. So, I've left myself a little room here to set up the uh, combat camera. I guess we're inside an arena. I don't really have a map for that, but I do have a K-9 
cave mat that looks slightly more cave-like than, or slightly more arena-like, I suppose, than the beach. The inside of, a, of an ancient pillar. Right, hopefully this will be a bit better with the lights than it was last time. Trying not to look at these, or the numbers. Here we go. Number one, or well, first card, second card, and are these okay? Yeah, there we go, third card, all right. No, it's always the one on the rightmost position that's uh, got some glare on it. I don't suppose I can angle this better for you guys to see. <sighs> Who the hell sleeves their cards? I mean, it's not all that much better, but I suppose it is better. Okay, so this guy's tough as nails. Oh god, look at that. Eight damage. Man, I hope I don't die. Okay, we need to take this guy down. Okay. So I got my four combat cubes. And I got my... Uh, my three tokens here. So. Who can do three damage? Oh, Kanan's got his diagonal ability as well. God, what is that? Six? I mean, these two on the um, on the left are fairly, fairly easy. I don't know if it's better to try and take them out or if it's better to... Or if it's better to try and kill the Mythe and Crusher straight away. Like, he is, like, miles tougher than the others. I mean, which makes sense, because they're both, well, level 3, 4, and 6. Ugh. So this one in the middle is the easiest, but still, uh, 5 damage... Those two Mythen, regular Mythens, do five damage, and the Crusher, Crusher does eight damage. That's rough. There's no doors, Difter. That's the main thing. Remember, to defeat the arena, you must defeat the beast, but only if you can defeat the beast within. I'm gonna let you down, Hackers. I'm not sure I get your reference. If that's a reference, indeed. Yeah, what is this? Is like um, what is this like uh, Thunderdome? No, not Thunderdome. I guess it's like Thunderdome. Or oh, that scene in Attack the Clones. Everyone's favorite Star Trek movie. Okay, so um, <laughs> Hager says it's not a, not a reference. He's just he's just giving me helpful tips. All right, defeat the beast within. Save yourselves! Save the rebellion! Save yourselves! Um, okay, so this five over here, I think... I think what I want to do here... Like, I need, I need to get the captain up the back. What I need is better weaponry. So, now let's have a think here. Gregory's got three hit points. Oh, I don't have enough hit points. Um, but if Gregory had plus one damage, he can't get plus one damage easily, though. So I could use Zvarm and the Might. <sighs> Actually, do you know what? Marco's ability here might be really, really useful on the Might and Crusher. It occurs to me. But how would we hit it? I mean, his accuracy is so bad.
So we'd need max. This puzzle is insane. These puzzles are insane. So what I'm thinking about here is Marco's ability here, where it lets you put out two extra damage, provided you don't cover hearts. So that, that could actually let us take out the four four bonus damage on the Mythe and Crusher if we give that to someone. But it does, of course, mean that Marco needs to do an attack. Actually, no, do you know what? I can just use the right to a Valard, can't I, to give this token to someone. So maybe we use the right to... It's going to cost me two command points, which is so pricey. Command points are so good. Um, I've only got three. Damn it. I don't know if uh, equipping this was... Well, actually, it might be the right choice, because Gregory's got some extra hit points if I want. But maybe we go ahead and give Marco's ability to the captain and then um, we can attack with Mac and uh, maybe get some damage on to I mean Mac could take out the Mythe and Brute in one hit if she hits no she can't she needs one extra damage oh, she can't get it either hmm So, I do like the idea of just one-shotting the Mythe and Brute. She gets bonus damage from... I wish I had more cards in hand. Oh, could I use Gloria right now? Although, actually, you have to give those up from equipped cards, don't you? So that's not really helpful. Rats. Okay, so... I think we start by attacking with Mac anyway. If she does well here, I mean, we could do the extra damage, just wipe out the Mythe and Brute and pass over the accuracy token to someone else if we use this. Which means we can't use the right to a Valard, but maybe I'm not worried about that. Um, yeah. Three damage over here. Who gives plus one damage, actually? Laurent does, and... Kasumi does, and so does Audrey, actually. Kasumi's also really good, so maybe we give it to Kasumi. Actually, do you know... Ah, damn it. If Mac hits this middle brute, god, this is... You basically have to plan out this whole combat, and then if you miss one... It's like you've got to redo your whole thing. These are these are really challenging puzzles. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it as usual. As usual. Do you know what? Let's actually do Kasumi on the Mythe and Brute. I think that's a better shout. And then she can give her plus one damage to Kanan. And he could actually wipe out the Mythe and Slayer as well. Although the chances of him hitting are so low. Oh my god. And then Raphael has swapped the positions of two enemy cards. So maybe we... No, I don't think that's helpful. I was thinking we could swap the um, Mythe and Crusher with the Mythe and Brute, and then... We could attack the Slayer and spill damage onto the Crusher, but I don't think it's particularly useful. It'd be... Yeah. Oh, so many options. So little good ones. Okay, so we're gonna do... Kasumi on the... Um... Kasumi on the Mythe and Brute here. So she's got plus two accuracy. She does three damage. So fingers crossed we can hit here because I ain't got anything else going on. All right. Show me a card. Blam. That's a four. You know, I'll see it there. Come on, camera. Help me out here, buddy. Okay, there we go. It's a four, so that is that is in fact a hit, just barely. Anything less, we would have missed. So, 
Okay, so I've done three damage, so I think we can kill this one outright, right? We can just go one, two, three down the middle. And because the heart head has a synergy symbol on it, we can go ahead and pass our token off to someone. So I'm thinking we give the plus one damage to Kanan, right? Because then he could do four damage and he can attack diagonally as well. So he could wipe out the Slayer straight straight up. Um, the only thing is his accuracy kind of sucks. Having said that, we've got plus one action option, plus one accuracy option here, and also other people who can help out. So fingers crossed, this just kind of works out. He's got plus one, so he also needs a four up. Okay, so we can either pay two command points to get plus one. Or um, we can pay one command point to use the gear to re-roll entirely. I think it's better to get the plus one. Um, in fact, we can just trigger his own ability to do that. So this gives him plus one accuracy, which means that that's our five that we need to hit the Mythen Slayer. Okay, so then we can give up this token here to add one damage, so that's four damage in total with the pistol, which means we can kill him, because we can attack diagonally using the double shot. So, we're off to a pretty good start, um, in the sense that we've managed to kill two without taking any damage back. One, two, three, four. Now we've just got to deal with this Mythen Crusher. So I'm going to go ahead and give my synergy token to the captain. And I still think we need to give the captain some accuracy as well. So we'll probably attack next with Mac. And look at just taking out the damage symbols on this character. Because it's going to get an attack back against Mac. I mean, actually, that's pretty terrible. Well, we've got the reroll, so maybe we just kind of... I, I need a 5-up to hit. Which I'm, oh, that... I need a 5-up to hit, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, I can reroll a 1, and I can reroll twice, because I've got the synergy token from Kanan, and I've also got the... this other token as well. Yeah, so, okay, so let's do this. Here we go. We're, we're basically just gambling here because we've got two re-rolls and that's it. So we need a five up to hit. Um, why am I attacking? Hang on, wait a minute. I've got two attack cubes left. Yeah, but we need to attack with the captain first to wipe out all of this creature's damage. So, Sophia, you can... Sophie, you can do it. Sophia Odessa, my hero. You can do it. Come on. Ha! 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 Nailed it. Why do I always... I always have Kanan's synergy token, and I never need it. And then when I desperately need it, I don't have it. What is this called? Sod's Law? Or Michael's Law? Okay, so we've got uh, four damage, which is going to be one, two, three, four. And then it attacks back for four damage onto the captain. She's got block one, so she blocks one and takes three. And because she's got a synergy token, she can also now pass off her synergy token. Although I don't think this is actually any use to anyone, given the current state of affairs, because all of the damage on the creature is in a straight line. And I had to do it that way, because otherwise... Um, you know, otherwise he would have, um, murdered me, or what have you. So even if I wipe out his final damage, he can still do three per hit. Um, so realistically, anyone who attacks him next is, oh, what the hell is that camera? Anyone who attacks him next is going to take three damage. So we need someone with high accuracy and high defense. Hmm. 
I mean, it could be uh, Marco, but he doesn't have high defense. And again, Gregory could attack, but Gregory has got no defense at all, which is a bummer. Yeah, I don't know who could uh, who could do this attack. I'm tempted by Mac. She could take four and survive. I'm thinking about minimizing damage as well. Well, this diagonal synergy token, we can give this to someone who does a lot of damage, just in case. Like Gregory, although I don't think he's going to need it because... So Gregory does three damage because he's got the twin daggers. The only weapon I've actually managed to find and buy so far. I found a couple of other weapons, but I couldn't afford them because I'm... I blew all my money on a totem. So... Yeah, so I think let's do this final attack with Mac. She can put out a couple of damage on the... Oh, actually, she can't even put out three too useful damage, really. Well, she... She won't be killed, at least. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of need someone with three damage to attack, which could be Kasumi. That's going to be rough, though. She still needs a 4-up. Let's... Let's give it a shot. I guess. Oof. Okay, please don't miss, Kasumi. 4-up. Hey! This is my lucky day. I'm just... <laughs> Hands up. I'm just getting lucky. All right, so we've done three damage. So we're going to go across the top like that, which means we're going to take four damage in the counterattack, which does suck. But fortunately, she doesn't have any damage on her yet, so... I'm running out of damage tokens here. It's okay, I can actually kill off the two cards. You can't run out of damage tokens, is what I'm saying. Let me know, if, by the way, if the music is too loud, because um, it's hard for me to check the levels. I think it's okay, but uh, I don't have feedback on my own audio, because I still haven't got good enough to hear myself talk without it really messing with my head. Um, otherwise, I totally have monitoring on. Okay, so that's the end of that. So now we're going to go to the end of round um, enemy attacks. So obviously two enemies are dead, so it's just the brute who's attacking for four damage. So we have to pick someone on the team to take four damage. Um, and this is going to spill over anyway, so... I guess it's going to be Audrey. Um, I've run out of damage tokens, so I guess we can get rid of these dead enemies. Dead. You're dead too. Okay. Right, get out of here. God, this Mython Crusher has four arms and the head of a ball. He's a nasty piece of work. So, we only need four... Well, we need three damage to kill him, I think. Well, I don't understand why that heart has a one in it, actually. Because usually if the heart is just one, it's a one. You know what I mean? I feel like that might be a misprint. Like that's a one there, so I don't know why this has got a one in it. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna second guess it. <laughs> like, what would I assume? Was it meant to be a two? I don't know. But I'm not gonna. Hager says, "I hate hearing my own voice. It makes my skin crawl." I mean, I'm quite used to hearing my own voice now, because I've edited so many of these videos. Um, so, but yeah, it used to really weird me out. Now I don't mind it so much. What I hate, I still can't deal with, is hearing it. Um, in monitoring so hearing it as i talk essentially um and it would be it's a everyone everyone a lot of people who do radio and a lot of people who do live streaming as well do monitor their own voice so they can check the levels make sure people can be heard make sure that uh we use um compression 
to make sure that all the sound is sort of roughly equal. There's not too many peaks and troughs, you know. If I start shout shouting, I don't want it to just feed through the raw levels because it would deafen you guys. So I want to make sure that um, there's a there's a level that's bringing down those peaks and raising those troughs a bit, you know. So you still get the kind of effects of shouting and whispering without, you know, blowing the audio out. But um, I'd, so uh, so it's very useful to have monitoring on, so you can hear that kind of stuff and make sure that the compression is working okay. I just I can't deal with it. I can't deal with the live feedback, especially when it's offset by a little bit. Like um, it's hard to get monitoring so that it, it's like it's like for like feedback. So I think it's actually easier when it's dead on, like you're literally getting it fed back as you talk, like with no delay. But unfortunately, with my setup here, there's always a little bit of delay as well, which is so hard to ignore. Um, uh, Diff just says limiters are love, compressors are life. Yeah. Setting up, I mean, I still don't think I have the audio super well set up for for here, but so again, getting the audio figured out and getting it set up well was something I worked really, really hard on because I think it's it's so important. So I think we we need to do three damage here, and so I think we just activate. Uh, we get our cubes back. And I think we just activate Gregory, because he can do three damage and he's got a plus four to hit, so... Um, we should be okay here. Fingers crossed. Anything but a one, he said, touching wood. Yeah, five. So that's three damage. So you can put out those, uh, those tokens there, cover up the two health points, and defeat the Mython Crusher. Hooray! Interestingly as well, this... Maybe I should check to see if that token, uh, that symbol actually appears in the rule book because it occurs to me that actually it's also the only one that doesn't have a... It doesn't have a... All the other ones have body parts except for that bottom one in the left. But it doesn't say anything here. Yeah, it just says cover it with damage to defeat it. So... Maybe we've got an extra hard version of the Crusher. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I've also closed the uh, the book, so I can't remember which uh, chapter we were reading. But we've done it! We've done it, team! Yep, there it is. So we're over here. <clears throat> the final Mython falls to one knee. The hot, ragged breath from his nostrils turns the air to steam in front of him. An empty victory, he says. Orphash's power that remains in this place will not let us die dead for long. There must always be a fight in the arena. The last of his strength spent... The mython falls forward and breathes no more. A large coin purse lands on the ground in front of you. Your prize. You look around, but you can't find who tossed it. Gain six coins, one XP, and return to the ship. Ooh. Gonna get me some money. That's good, because I think we need probably to have a... What I need is some um, adventures that don't result in combat. Because, like, everybody's wounded, like, badly wounded, but basically no one's fatigued. So, if I could just find a challenge that doesn't involve me fighting anything, that'd be great. Um, right, so one XP and six coins. And I'm going to make a little note here as well um, with the keyword here. So, I've been here. I'm developing a system here, guys. I'm marking down that I've been here, and there was an opportunity to use a keyword that I didn't have. So, if we ever come back, we, we know that now. Or if we find that keyword somewhere, we know that now. So, we've got one more action. I think we should probably get rid of the sea serpent, partly because I could fatigue a bunch of people to do it, and then maybe we can go to the inn and get healed up, seeing as we've got some money uh, to do that. So, 
I think, let's go ahead and fatigue a bunch of people with some strength on them. So we'll get Raphael. It's a strength 7 check. So that's 2. So we're down to a 5 up we need. We can fatigue Marco. Now we need a 4 up. Let's fatigue Laurent. So we need a 3 up. And I feel good about the 3 up. We can also use the gear to redraw if necessary. So this is an action. It says it's an action. And then we discard the card if we pass. Yeah, three. So that's just exactly what we needed, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Sea Serpent be gone. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So that's the end of the round. And I've forgotten what I have to do at the end of the round. I'll just go back to the top, don't I? Just take another ship action. Man, how do I play this game again? <laughs> he literally played one other game and forgot everything. No! Oh, that went so far away. My map just flew off the table and across the room. There's so much going on. T. Carter says, how much have I missed? Uh, so far... Uh, T. Carter, nothing major. Um, Difter says he thinks that that one heart is misprinted. Yeah, I think it might be, Difter, especially because there was no body part named on it. Either that or it was a late addition. They found the enemy was too easy. So they were like, we're just going to make this enemy a bit harder, maybe. Um, so maybe they intended to add a... Uh, I don't know. In any case, I think uh, I think we treated it pretty fairly, given that we had no way of really knowing. Okay, so now we're back to our ship action. Uh, yeah, so Tikar, all we did was uh, defeat the sea serpent that was plaguing us. We went and explored this pillar, and we had a we had a uh, Thunderdome style fight with some bull people, which we won, but at some cost. You can see everyone's quite badly wounded now. So I think we're going to sail back over to Lynn's Grove, which is kind of a shame, really, because I would like to actually explore another the rest of these pillars first, because I do need to find that key word. Maybe we can do a bit more cooking. I mean, I'm kind of all out of food. Uh, speaking of which, let's head over to the sick bay and get an um, ability card. So we got uh, Focus Mind. When this crew member is at full health, plus one accuracy. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that's a two level two card with two to equip. God, who needs that? Definitely not Gregory. I could probably use that on Kanan, actually. Because he's got quite a good attack, but he needs more damage. Uh, he needs more accuracy. Of course, he's not at full health right now. But we get to three commands. One, two, three. And also we get to have a two heal two health. So I think it's better, like I said, to heal up someone fully. So let's heal two off of Kanan. Because his diagonal attack is so useful. Although actually the captain's also hurt. Dang it. Okay. Like I said, I'm hoping we'll find some challenge we can do that doesn't involve combat. But first, this. Traveling healer, perhaps? Loose supplies. Crates float on the sea after a trade ship meets an untimely end. Oh, good. I thought this was going to be my supplies. Watch for the supplies. Perception 6. Okay, so we can sort of spot... Perception 6. Okay. Okay. Let's have a think here. Who's got a good perception? Nobody. We're not in a very good way, team. Let's do... Fatigue on the captain. Fatigue on Mac. Should you know, let's not fatigue the captain. Let's fatigue Audrey. That's two. So we still need a four up. Okay, I'm going to risk it. <clears throat> yeah. 
Hey, look at that. God, I'm so good at drawing cards. <laughs> so it says here, place a grain token on two different regions of the atlas that currently do not contain your ship. When you move to either region, gain the token there immediately. Nice. Well, let's put them in to here and here because I think these are the ways I'm going to be going back to Lynn's Grove. Now, the real question is whether or not we can, um, because I don't have enough food to cook anything. Well, actually, I could cook the soup, but it doesn't heal. It just restores fatigue. And I think I'm actually not in a very good way at all. So I think it's probably the situation where I should head back to Lynn's Grove and do a port action, unfortunately. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but I think it's probably the best course of action to play it safe rather than to die. So I guess... I guess let's do that. So I guess we'll fatigue the captain. Just because uh, we need two movement, ideally, here. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, well, that's six. So we didn't need to fatigue the captain, but you never know. So we go one into here, collect this food. Two into here. So we went around the top, so we could skip over this tiny region down here uh, to collect this food. And for our second action, we will port action here in Lynn's Grove. So, as you remember with the port, we can spend four to heal a fatigue on everyone and two health. We can also use the shipyard, the healer, and the XP. But um, I don't think we're going to use the XP right now. So here's our five down to one. And everybody loses a fatigue, which is good because we've got a lot of fatigue. And everyone heals two health as well. Kind of makes my uh, my um, sick bay feel a little less useful, but it's okay. We can gain grain exactly differently. We can gain grain from our exploits. Okay. So, is there anything else I'm going to do here? Do I want to try and fix the ship at the shipyard? I'm kind of still feeling okay about it. I kind of want to hang on to my money. I could trade an artifact for two repair. What's the point in that, though? I might as well just keep the artifacts for later. Does anyone... Nobody else is super poorly wounded. I guess I'd feel slightly better if we fixed something else. So let's spend one coin and fix the sick bay, just because I think if that gets fully damaged, I'd be really upset and sad and in trouble. Oh, and my head is covering up this whole map. So we've got three damage out there now. One to the deck, the hull, and the galley. All right. And that's our two actions. We traveled, and then we ported. So we're back to the top of the round. And let's head over to the quarters, because I just I want to use the cooking book again. It's so useful. I wish I had more stuff. I suppose we could go onto the deck and do a little search, see if we could get some money... And then we could do maybe a, a... I need more money. This is like a whole thing, searching these magical pillars. I'd like another gun, please. Did I... I need to go get my map. Hang on, team. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay. I returned with my map. So I haven't actually been to 165 yet either. I don't know what's in there, but we can go to 165. Didn't we have a, uh, yeah, we found this wooden trunk with its instructions to return it to its owner. Someone named S. Zassi. Now, where did I, didn't I write down? Oh, I didn't write down where I should be taking this. 
I don't even remember where I found it. I think I found it in the woods near here, and it said we had to take it to the woods... South? No, it was the Rocky Island, wasn't it? Yes. We had to take it to the Rocky Island. And I was trying to figure out where that was. Did I check any of these? I think I decided it was either here... Or here... Or here. I'm going to call my ship the a HMS H ADHD because it doesn't seem to want to finish up anything. <laughs> it just gets, I just get distracted by the next shiny thing that comes along. Like, oh my god, we can do this thing. Okay, and as part of the quarters action, did I do any of the quarters action yet? No, I didn't. I just decided to do it and then I started getting distracted. So here's the card. Right? Did I not spend any command last time? Oh, that's good. I've got lots of command. Okay, bold attempt. Discard this card to redraw your fate. Okay, it's a four, though. We get three command points. And Rocky Island, yes, but we weren't sure which one was that Rocky Island. Yeah, Difter, I just can't remember if it was to the south... I think it was... Didn't it say a nearby Rocky Island or something like that? Yeah, directly... Yeah, to the right or directly above. I think that's right. Yeah, I think it was a Rocky Island near Lynn's Grove, wasn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Difter, for giving me the out. <laughs> I can blame him if we get hopelessly lost. What we'll probably do is find some other quest to do. Um, oh, and we can clear this off as well, actually. That's good. So we can clear off those two. And now it's an event card. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Otherworldly path. The air fluctuates ahead, your view distorted as if through hot air. An unfamiliar horizon appears beyond. Sail through. Turn one page on the atlas, left or right, and move the ship to one of the regions there. Gain one frightened. Or steer the ship away. Pay one command and gain one fatigue. Oh yeah, no, I'm not done here. I mean, that's kind of cool, but like we can just wind up somewhere else completely random. But I'm doing stuff here. I don't need to sail off into the unknown. So I'm going to give up one of these and put a fatigue on Marco. That's a weekend. There we go. Okay. So. Well, I guess we should maybe do this quest. Who knows, maybe if we return it, we'll be rewarded with vast riches. <sighs> I kind of want more money because I want to get another weapon. So let's uh, spend one here to cook the spicy gumbo again. No, let's wait, actually. We'll cook afterwards. But I will spend two to put the focus mind onto Kanan. So this is the one that gives him, so long as he's at full health, he gets plus one accuracy. Which I think is really, really good, because he's got the uh, the old double shot, which lets him attack diagonally as well. Okay, and then for our first action, we're going to do a travel. So I'm not going to fatigue anyone, because I'm only going to, I only want to travel one in here. And then I can overcome the storm, and then I'll try to interact with this house. So here we go. We're gonna. This is our sailing check. It's a two, so we only got one movement, which is fine. We'll go in here, and now we've got to do a strength six check. We're kind of okay with taking one damage actually, so I might just let this one ride. I can add one if I draw five with the bold attempt card, which I'm happy to do. It's a four, so the damage is to the galley. Oh, that's a, kind of a problem. I don't know. I don't really use the galley very much. Okay. And now we're going to explore 115. So we get one more command token for doing from our engaged power here. Let's find out what's going on. 
I've been looking for this luggage for a really long time. Thank you so much for bringing it back. Here's a million coins. <clears throat> you land in a small wooded area. Search the woods for supplies is the only option we have. Perception 6. Um, okay, well I guess that's what we're doing then. So I guess this is not where we had to come, although there was a little bit of information here as well. Like, there's so many keywords and things that, um, that uh, are revealed to you, you know? And it's like, the next time I play this, I can check all my keywords and then I might have some more insight into stuff. It's really interesting. Um, I wonder if I'm gonna be compelled, feel compelled to do that. So we're doing perception six. So I think we're gonna fatigue Kasumi and Audrey. Now we need a four up. I just drew a bunch of fours. So maybe we fatigue Mac as well. I don't like fatiguing three people, but that's why I saved the recipe until after this. So I can get rid of that. So we need a three up here. Oh, it was a five. We played it too safe. Okay. <clears throat> you come across a fallen tree. It's the work of a few hours to turn it into something usable. Gain two materials and return to the ship. Okay. Not super exciting, I must confess, but at least we've ruled this out as a possible location for S. Zassi. Okay, and the final, I think my final act will be to... Oh, well, actually, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm first going to cook some more spicy gumbo, so we can give up a food and a grain here to do that. A meat and a grain. And then we can get rid of these three fatigue tokens here, and we can heal... Actually, who should we get rid of? Let's leave that one there and get rid of it. Max. And then we can also heal three hit points. So I'm going to get rid of Gregory and the two on Kasumi, I think. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to spend one more to equip this refine card onto Audrey. So this is just a one cost. It's a two level card, level two card. I mean, it's not easy, so sorry about that. Oh, see, one cost, two card, and it gives us this repair one ability, which she kind of already has, but the ability inherent on her board costs two, so it is a bit of an upgrade. Also, actually, I meant to mention, in the last episode, I gave her a southern accent, because I thought it'd be cute, but she's actually from Liverpool, so she, <laughs> I can't really do a Liverpool accent, um, but she should have had a Liverpudlian accent, not a South southern american accent um so i'll try my best the next time she has any lines <laughs> yeah exactly don't worry guys we're just ruling these things out as we slowly make our way across the uh the land here so that's it that was all i wanted to do this round so we'll call that a day for our turn we'll head back to the ship action it really feels like I'm forgetting something between rounds here, but I'm, I'm sure I'm not. Um, I think we'll just head back over to Sick Bay, keep healing people up. Gets us, gets us lots of good stuff. Sick Bay is useful, especially with upgraded. Yeah, Hager says just imitate the Beatles. Okay, I'll try. So we've got a uh, bandage. Oh, good. So that's a good one. It's a one as well, so it's good to get that out of the deck. And give that maybe to um, somebody when they take damage. We get three more command, and then we get to heal two as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and heal one on the uh, old captain here. And one off of Marco, I suppose. Okay. Event. Lookout Tower. 
A narrow tower sits atop a rocky spire in the ocean. You can climb the tower to draw the top five search tokens. Rearrange them how you like, then draw a fate, and if it's a one or a two, you gain frightened, or you can leave the tower. Well, I only have... The thing is, I only have uh, three fate to... Uh, oh, fate... Oh no, yeah, search tokens. I only have three search tokens left in the deck. Um, and I'm pretty sure they're all bad. So even if I reset the deck and put these ones on top... Because um, you're not supposed to reset the deck until you've made your way through it. But uh, all the ones I've had so far in the discard here are all really the best ones. So I'm pretty sure those ones are all bad. Um, so I think I'll just leave the tower. Partly because I don't know how to parse it when the deck isn't full. I presume I only get to look at the top three. And I don't think rearranging them is going to be very helpful. Um, okay, so... Yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a travel. I only want to travel one, so I'm not going to use any special cards here. Land! Uh, three. Well, that's one point of movement. So we're going in here. We're going to explore one, two, seven. We get one more command. Ooh, look at this, we're rich. This has got to be it, right? This has got to be the rocky island near Linsgrove. Unless it's literally 201. But that's not rocky, is it? Unless I've completely forgotten what we're doing. There's a child, shouts Kanan. A lone child on that rocky island, look! You hurry to the starboard railing, eyeglass in hand, and sure enough, you see a small humani humanoid figure on the rocky shore. The rest of the island appears barren, but something isn't right. The child flickers in the wind. He might be in trouble, poor boy. We have to stop and offer our help, says Kanan. So we've got two options here. Land on the island, or keep sailing. I mean, I'm inclined to land on the island, right, guys? Like, nothing's going to happen unless... Something, I mean, it's obviously a haunted ghost child. But maybe we can help it? Maybe it's a ghost looking for its lost luggage. Can't, can't rest until it gets its lost luggage back. Hmm? Okay, here we go. We're going to land on the island. Uh-oh. He looks just like my youngest son, says Kanan, rushing ahead of the group and kneeling down in front of the figure. Hello, my name is Kanan. What's your name? Where are you from? Are you lost? To you, the figure looks nothing like a child. It's just a shadow, a wisp of flickering smoke in a vaguely human shape. There's a strange, scratching whisper at the edge of your hearing. Kanan listens to the figure with rapt attention. So we've got two options. We can drag Kanan away. Or wait and see what happens. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> Card is like, help the hologram. Yeah, it's, uh, the hologram's on the fritz again. The holograms have come to life. <laughs> Another Star Wars reference for you guys. So. Um. So I'm getting bad siren vibes, right? Like sirens luring people to their death. On the other hand, there's clearly some connection here between Kanan and this child. Um, I just feel like this might be really bad, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait it out. I'm gonna wait and see what happens. I think because if I pull Kanan away, probably what happens is we never know. <laughs> Ralph, we are here because of our curiosity. Exactly, we are explorers. Let us observe and see what happens. 
Kanan talks to the apparition in a gentle voice. Port Haven? I'm not entirely sure we know where that is, but we can always find it. Of course we'll give you a ride if that's what you need. The shadow disappears, but for some reason Kanan doesn't seem distressed about it. We can go now, Captain, he says. As you board the ship, you could swear you see the flicker of a shadow on the deck, just out of the corner of your eye. But when you turn to look, it's gone. Kanan offers the shadow a ride to Port Haven, and it may have followed you onto the Manticore. Gain quest 88. Okay. Well, let's have a look and see what this quest is. So, the, um, the thing here as well to note is that uh, we do actually know where Port Haven is. It's on the same, it's in the same area where the, I mean, we could check the map anyway. It's in the, it's above, it's above Glance. Did I say 88? I did say 88, didn't I? Quest 88. So, it's to the east, to the west of here. The Ghost Child. Kanan offered to give a child a ride to Port Haven. The child who, who to him looked like his son, appeared to the rest of us as a wisp of smoke in the vague shape of a child. I may be on board even now. The quest. New quest. Okay, well, we still haven't found this damn lost luggage thing. I'm going to make a note here as well that I've, I've been here. So, I mean, I guess it's got to be 137 then, right? That's the only remaining one it could be. Anyway, we're all out of actions for this turn. So, that's actually the end of that. So now it's the beginning of the next turn. Fine. So I guess we're going to pick our ship action here. And maybe... Maybe while the ship is in... Well, the thing, the reason I wrote this one off, if you remember, is because it's actually the bottom of a peninsula, right? Like, uh, I say it's a peninsula at the bottom of a much bigger island, I think. But I don't exactly remember also what... Uh, so if you look here on the map, with all my amazing notes on it, you can see that 137 is at the bottom of a much larger island. So I don't know if maybe we should have checked 201 or 165 instead. Um, because if you look at the map, right? Like, there's not a lot of... Unless the Rocky Island is legitimately on another... Oh, this is not a useful angle at all. Is legitimately on another... A whole other thing, right? Like a whole other atlas page or something. Well, I mean, you guys can see super clearly from the top-down cameras. So I don't really know why I'm moving this one over here. But, like, I don't see any other rocky islands around here. Maybe it meant on another page. There are a bunch of rocky islands on the original. So if we remember, this is actually the original. We're just above the original page we started on. And I think both 43 and 54 were pretty rocky. I think 54 is actually where that guy's kid is, uh, fighting the demons or whatever. But Ralph says 149 is rocky too. Uh, yeah, you're right about that. 149 is here. So, I mean, it could be 149. The reason I liked 155 is because there's a house there. And the reason I like 137 is there's also a house there. So, I don't know. In any case, we have to go ahead and take a ship action. So... I kind of, uh... I'm kind of thinking maybe we do a search token just because I've got the... the means to sort of deal with it right now. It's a bit calm and we don't... We're kind of doing okay with the rest of this stuff, so... Here we go. So we get two command, which we might as well take now. God, we're doing well for command. Lamp. 
Uh, so we we lose a. Wait, is that gain a morale? Or is that? Let's take a low morale token and a money, right? Is that just a regular money though? Yeah, that's not like a fancy money, is it? I mean, I presume this isn't like the ship damage. If I take this coin, I'm gonna get one low morale and one coin. Whereas the ship damage on the search tokens, you have to take all the ship damage. Um, let's do one more. I'm, I want to get through some of the, the worst ones here, so. Oh, gain two grain or two materials. Um, let's take the grain, actually. Man, I thought there. I think the next token then is the worst one, which is fine because I want this grain anyway. So. I'll just live with that for now. Um, and I took the two commands, so... We're onto the event card. Uh-oh. We're heading into the stormy waters now, boys. Hunting sharks. Three sharks pursue a small whale. Slay the sharks. Gain two meat. Or leave the whale to defend itself. No, let's slay the sharks. We can do that. We can trigger uh, Raphael for this one. And I guess we'll make use of Laurent just because it seems like a good idea to use someone with a fishing experience. So that's uh, that's a total of three strengths. So we need a three up here. And we got a five, so we're A-OK. -okay. We can grab two meats. Hurrah! Good job, team. Okay, so we're actually doing pretty good for food and things. Okay. Now I guess we're just going to sail... So do we try to sail across to 137? Page 19. Ooh. Huh, I just noticed that if we, um, if we sail to the east of here, we're actually in the Tides of Ruin. I was thinking it might be safer to actually sail north and then sail south again rather than going through the dangerous water over here, but I'm not sure. I also noticed that if we sail over here, I need to get another book out, which is interesting. We already ate all our grain. Yeah, we're big fans of grain. Um, okay, so first action is travel. I guess I should probably fatigue someone. Let's fatigue Audrey. That gets us two. And we've got two as well, so that's four. So we get two points of movement. So I guess maybe... Is it safer to sail north and then come back down south? No, I think we just do this. So we're going to take a point of damage to the ship because I don't think I'm going to fatigue chest anyone else here. So unless we get a six, no, it's a one. <laughs> so the point of damage is two, four, which is the galley again. So that's going to spill over somewhere else I can choose. So I'll put it here in the quarters, I think. And then for a second point of movement, we'll continue over here. And finally, we'll do an explore at 137. Look at all this junk I've got. Oh well, here we go. 137. I've got so many command points. Give me something to use them on, please, game book. <clears throat> An old hut stands on the shore of a rocky island. Close enough to the water to be bathed in sea spray every time a wave hits. The hut is built of grey and weathered wood like driftwood. 
but it's sturdily constructed and in good repair. If someone lives here, they're nowhere in sight. In the shallow water, you find an old bronze bell mounted on a wooden pole. A sign nailed to the pole reads, If you're here to return my trunk, ring once, and only once. S. Sassy. Found him. We found him! Come get your trunk! So we can search the hut, we can ring the bell once, or ring the bell repeatedly. I don't see any reason to antagonize this person, so let's ring the bell one time. <clears throat> The bell rings out far louder than you would have expected from its small size. You feel the sound reverberating through your bones and your teeth buzz. It's not a pleasant feeling. After a moment, a, wa a woman walks out of the water. Her long wet hair is a strange greenish color and falls in chunks around her shoulders. It almost gives the impression of seaweed. A blathrine, Mac whispers to you. When she sees you on the shore, she cocks her head to one side quizzically. I kind of want to give her like a, like an underwater voice, like a, but I don't think I'd be able to talk while I do that. How can I help you? Are you S. Sassy? Marco asks. She confirms her identity. When you give her, her the trunk, she looks delighted. I was afraid that I'd never see this again. Thank you for your kindness in returning it to me. I've just been diving for pearls. I must give you some sort of reward for coming all this way to help me. But I can't think of what. Do you have any ideas? What would you like? You can ask for some pearls. Ask for whatever is in the trunk. Or ask for the bell. bell seems interesting because I guess it's some kind of um, blathrine is that what she's called um, some kind of blathrine magical thing I'm more inclined to ask about the bell than the pearls I don't want to ask for whatever's in the trunk because it seems kind of rude to bring it all the way back and then be like can I have what I've just brought you like um, so yeah let's ask for the bell it seems magical <clears throat> Hmm. Well, I suppose I don't really need the bell anymore since I have my trunk back. You can take it, but be careful with it. If you ring it once, it's a great way to contact people over long distances. But if you ring it more than once, it can hurt people. Wow, okay, so basically it was a great idea that I didn't just start ringing it repeatedly. Um, gain one experience point. Gain adventure card 85, Death's Bell. And complete the quest 65. Wow, okay, yeah, seriously. Don't ring Death's Bell a ton of times unless you're in real trouble, I guess. So we got one experience point. We get uh, rid of this card. And we get Death's Bell. Ooh. Exciting stuff. It's a weapon. Death's Bell. Accuracy 5, damage 2. So it's basically a super accurate weapon. It's also super blue, so I'll, see, I'll show you guys on this camera how it looks. So that's pretty cool. We've got Death's Bell. I mean, it's not a great weapon, but it's certainly you know, better than two with no accuracy bonus. I mean, I like that the act, the, the directions in this game are not super accurate, right? Like, I, I, I do think it gave me a bit of a runaround on that last one, but I'd rather they were a little less accurate than they could be rather than being too accurate because there I like the sort of the sense of adventure and 
I like in the instances where I've looked at the map and gone, oh, I was probably supposed to go there. What an idiot I am. I'd much rather, like, so there have been occasions where I was like, oh, I could have done, could have done better here, right? I, I think that's cool. Um, okay, so we could actually give this to Laurent, and then he'd actually be somewhat useful as a fighter. Because currently, he, well, I mean, his club does have defend on it. We could give it to Raphael. That might be good. It'd also be pretty good for Audrey, actually. Um, I think let's give it to Raphael, I think. No, uh, yeah, because then he does the same amount of damage. Well, his accuracy only goes up from plus three to plus five. Let's give it to let's give it to Audrey. I think it's actually best for her. She loses one block because she's got block one, but she gains. Um... Sorry, guys, this is gonna be a little bit shaky. But look at that. So she she loses one block, but she gains a massive amount of accuracy, and her damage remains the same. So I think that's probably worth it. Fingers crossed. Okay, so uh, that was two actions, I think. Yep, we traveled, and then we returned the trunk. So I'm, what else have we got here? We've got Abysmal, which is to re rescue Ulim's son. The tea offering. Right, I do want to go and do the tea offering, actually, which is just down here, the south. We never did this statue or this statue either. So maybe we can sail down towards the tea offering and drop in on these, these pillars on the way. That feels good to me. I also feel like I should probably equip some of these cards because I'm running out of command tokens. So. Let's uh, let's spend some command tokens. We can. Um, what can we do here? We can cook some flapjacks. Oh boy, flapjacks. Um. Uh, Let's go over here. We'll activate Zvarm to get a carrot. And then I think let's activate the spicy gumbo. Let's just heal up the crew. And we get rid of one, two, three tokens. And we can heal up three hit points as well. So I think we'll just clear up all of the damage on those two. Um, I'm going to spend two of these... Uh, I want to equip one of these cards. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend two of these to put down Bold Attempt on Raphael. I don't really like equipping it because it's a four. But also, um, actually, do you know what? Rather than doing that, let's, uh, let's put down one on... No, that's inefficient. Let's, yeah, we'll equip Bold Attempt here. But its special ability is to re-roll a fate thing. So we might be able to discard it to reroll a fate thing. We can also use it to add damage to the hammer. So, you know, that's good. And then we can activate Gloria to draw two more ability cards. So we've got Dodge. Discard this card to get plus two block. That's pretty cool. It is a four, though, with two on it. Two to equip. And we get uh, Cleaning. Instant effect, minus one morale. So, cleaning is a one, so I think I do like that. So let's spend two of these to equip, equip cleaning, and we'll put it down on um, Audrey. So she gets minus one morale, but what I'll do is I'll spend one on the captain to get rid of it just right away. There we go. Now we've spent some of our tokens, um, and I think we've made some good improvements overall. So back to the top of the round, and I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking, let's head back over to... Actually, do you know what? What I'll do as well... Actually, it doesn't really matter the order I do. So yeah, we'll head back over to the sick bay then. We get one more card. Uh, it's a three, two to equip. When you use the deck, draw a fate card. If it's a four up, gain a meat. So you can fish when you're doing the search action on the deck. Cool. We get three more command tokens. 
and we can heal too, so we'll get rid of the final damage on Raphael. So the crew's in pretty good nick now. Let's have a medium level event card. Wounded bird. A huge red bird crashes on the deck. Its wing is bloody. Tend to the bird and help it fly away. Savvy six. Or eat the bird. Kasumi gains low morale. Oh. I don't have any low morale. I just took one for cleaning, but then I got rid of it immediately. And if you fail, minus three. Sorry, Kasumi, we're going to eat the bird. I don't like eating the bird. I kind of want to help the bird fly away, but... You know... Uh, it, it probably would... Yeah, it's definitely a goner. It probably wouldn't make it. It's... It, uh, in fact, we took one look at it and we knew it was a goner for sure. There was no... Honestly, it's... It even said, it was like, eat me, I'm a goner. Okay, cool. Thanks, bird. Um, great. And we get one meat. Um. <laughs> oh, Heggers, I missed your quote. Yeah. For, that's not for whom the bell... That, that's Audrey's war cry now. Um, yeah, at least it was an albatross. Um, I'm trying to think how you would say that in a Liverpudlian accent. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. The bell tolls for thee. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> that's Audrey's war cry. Um, so we've resolved all of that that business. So I guess we're just going to go ahead and do a travel. I'm happy to travel one. I can also travel two, potentially, which is also fine. So, we'll just draw a card and see what happens, I think. It's a four, so we've got two points of travel. So, I guess we're not stopping off at this pillar. Because I don't really want to waste my extra point of travel. So, we'll go one, two, back into here. Which means that we are going to have to do a cunning check. Or else we're going to take another low morale. So, I'll fatigue Kanan for one. Um, to roll on this. And it's a three, so that's a total of five, so we've passed. Um, so no low morale. Did we do 113? No, I think I wanted to do it, right? Yeah, we haven't done it. So now we're going to explore 113. So we'll get one more of these for exploring, and we'll go ahead and find out what's going to happen now. Ba da da dum, bum bum bum. Story time. Story time. 113 is definitely lucky and not unlucky. <clears throat> the white walls of the pillar are covered with carvings of a chain like pattern. At the front of the pillar is a small pier and a massive door covered in carvings of the same pattern. Try the front door or leave. These are our only two options. I guess we try the front door. Following Zoe's... <clears throat> the door is locked tight. You spend some time trying to find a way to break the lock or get around it. But you have no luck. I suppose Zakra doesn't want us in this pillar, says Mac. While you and Mac discuss a way into the pillar, Laurent is busy fishing off the side of the pier. This way, the trip here won't be a total waste of time. Uh, what was that accent? French Canadian. Uh, Quebec? Uh, this way? No. This way, the trip won't be a total waste of time, he says. Gain a meat and return to the ship. Okay. I'm discovering all these different keywords I need to get into the these different places, but. But, uh, and I'm not sharing them all with you guys in case you want to explore on your own. Although you are getting some insight, which is basically don't come here unless you've got the keywords. <laughs> like, you've unlocked the keywords. So we got one meat. And we're done for now. So, can I do any more cooking? Do I have the food for cooking? 
I do actually. So let's go ahead and make some uh, soup because with the soup we can get rid of three things of any type. So we'll get rid of two meat I think and actually we'll get rid of three meat to make meat soup. And we can get rid of three fatigue, but we're just losing two. We can also get rid of the low morale off of Kasumi as well. All right, Nito. New turn. Let's head over to the bridge. So we're gonna gain one card, which is refined. So it's another two with a dealy bop on it. So we'll drop dodge because it's a four. I want it back in the deck. And we'll hang on to that. We'll get two commands. Then we can clear off all of these. Um, there we go. And now it's time for... <laughs> yeah, Difter, I wish it was uh, speak friend and enter. Nesting monster. A dangerous tentacled beast has made the galley its nest and has started laying eggs. Ongoing. Each time you use the galley, gain one Venom. Perform a Strength 7 challenge. If you dis succeed, discard this card and gain a meat. Right, well, I think we're just going to, like, basically do that straight away. Although, to be fair, I never use the galley. I don't need any meat right now, so maybe there's no so not so much urgency here. So, let's start with a travel action. At least it doesn't say... There should definitely be something on here that's like, if you don't put... A wound token on this card for every round you don't deal with it if you don't deal with it in a certain number of rounds those eggs start hatching difter says did you add the bird meat to the inventory i might have missed that um t carter says no one noticed it on deck uh, it's not on deck uh, it's somehow gotten into the galley which is down here i don't know how it got down there but um I mean, maybe it was on deck. Maybe it slipped past us at night. It was one of those... Maybe it was one of those tiny little cute little octopuses. And then when it got into the galley, it just, like, grew. Okay, so we've got here... Um, this is my travel action, isn't it? So we've got a three. So we're only getting one space. So we're just heading south. Um, and I did, Difter. I think I did get the bird meat. I'm pretty sure I picked it up. Oop, don't look at that. All right, here we are. So we headed south. So I guess now we're in here. Yeah, because I'm allowed to go in any of these spots, but this is the only one I can go to. And actually, there's nothing here. Man, that's a bummer. So I guess the only thing I can do is draw one more card. Or attempt to deal with my nesting monster. Uh, it's a one! So there we go, one more space of movement. And we're basically back to where we started. Hooray! Familiar waters. Okay, and that's the end of that. Um, do you know what, before I end the turn, I'm gonna make use of this refine action over here to repair a part of the ship. So we'll repair the galley, I think. Um, is there anything else I want to do before I end my turn? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to activate Zvarm to get a carrot as well. Okay. I didn't actually equip the fishing card, did I? Maybe I should equip the fishing card too. Yeah, let's spend two to equip the fishing card, and we'll equip it on Laurent. Laurent. Okay, so I think we'll start this turn by... ...taking a quarters action, which gives us a card. Discard this card to gain plus three accuracy. It's another focus card. I don't... No, it's a five. I don't want to equip that. I want to keep it in the deck. I need my high numbers. So three of these. Then we can restore two things. So I'm going to restore these two as well. So I can repair the ship again. I 
I like that. I want to keep the ship in good nick. So, um, let's go ahead and draw an event card. <coughs> Megalodon! Oh, no. I mean, it doesn't actually show anything on the card. It's just... I don't like the name. A massive shark tests the ship's hull for weaknesses. Steer the ship into the shark, savvy five, or attack the shark, strength six. Attack the shark! Come on, Marco. Let's get that shark. Blam! Three, four, five, six. Nailed it. Well, we just took out a Megalodon. And all we got was one measly piece of meat. Can't have been that big. Okay. Right, so now I guess we're going to engage with 187, 186 with an explore action. Yes. We go 186. Marco is secretly Jason Statham. Like, he's been, he's like, I've never given him a weapon. I never use him in combat, but he's actually proven incredibly useful. Just like tanking damage and like he keeps he takes so much damage probably because i guess i don't use him for combat i'm just like here marco take this damage yeah one giant shark and one bird of the same amount of meat i guess it was a very lean megalodon <clears throat> spires of rock flame orange as the sun slide into the sea bewitched with curiosity you follow a narrow stair to a solid oak door covered in carvings at the center of a door is a face his portly cheeks flushed by the light of the sunset. As you approach, he speaks with an air of authority. Go away! You're not welcome! So I am going to utilize my password that I discovered from the tea offering to open the door. Oh wow, the, so it was actually... A wooden face carved into the door itself. You make some honey flower tea for the wooden face. As you pour the golden liquid into his mouth, he sighs and the door swings open. Shafts of orange light float into the chamber, illuminating the dust in the air. There are twelve doorways in front of you, each carved above with three symbols. To your left is a narrow corridor, and beside it, a cluster of clay pots. A bit more honey next time! The face calls after you. Oh, God. So I've got... 12 options here. Uh, no, I've got 15 options. 12 of them are pick a door. And 3 of them are look for clues. Um... All of the look for clues ones are, are perception, um, but here we've got the uh, the doors as well. I, I will take, I think, one of the perception options, but here you can see all the 12 doors with the, the different symbols. So you've got all these different wingdings here, um, none of which I really recognize. Eye, foot, the symbol, I don't know. So I guess I'm going to take one of these perception options here so I can try and figure out what I'm supposed to be doing here. Because um, otherwise I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I don't, I'm going to just pick a door at random. No, that sounds bad. Okay, so. Our options here are. Examine the chamber. Search the narrow corridor to the left. Or search the clay pots nearby. So. There are 12 doorways in front of you. Each carved above with three symbols. To your left is a narrow corridor, and beside it, a cluster of clay pots. So 
So we can either I I'm I'm inclined rather than so my the three options I'm looking at because obviously there's all these door options. And the three options I'm in, I'm considering are examine the chamber, search the narrow corridor to the left, and search the clay pots nearby. So I'm thinking the narrow corridor seems like a reasonable course of action. Um, Yogi Bear says, we have a real Megalodon at the museum, preserved. Really? I didn't think the Megalodon was actually a real thing. Is it like, just like sort of a giant shark or something? Also, what museum? Do you work at a museum? You're in Australia, right? So, I mean, that makes sense. That's where the Megalodon preserve would be, or the exhibit would be at a museum in Australia. Either way, even if it's just a giant shark skeleton, that's extremely cool. How big is it? Let me know. Okay, so I think, yeah, let's take the, the narrow corridor to the left. So we need Perception 5 here. My Perception is notoriously bad. So let's go ahead and activate Laurent, Mac. And I think that's it. That, mean, that means we need a 3-up. I feel fairly confident we can do a 3-up. <laughs> Yoga Bear says, no, I don't work at the museum. I just remember being a little kid and thinking it would eat me. Uh, yeah, I suppose if you went to the museum as a kid and you saw, like, a shark skeleton, it would seem huge. Um, okay, here we go. So we need three up. Eh, we got a five. So we needn't bother to have exhausted the crew, but that's fine. Okay, so we've uh, searched the narrow corridor to the left. In the corridor, a carving breaks from the wall, landing on your foot. You lift the stone to find you lift the stone to find an image of a diamond. Okay. And now we're back in the central chamber. So we found a diamond. Okay, so I think we're going to have to do all three of these things, right? And then it's going to give us the the different options. So I'm just going to make a little note here uh, that we found a diamond. This is one eight six. Okay. So I think next good one is search the clay pots. So here we go. It's another perception check. They're all perception five, which is my worst stat. So I think we exhaust two again. It's going to be Kasumi and Audrey. Come on. Oh, it's a two. Um, so let's go ahead and put two points down here on max ability to give it plus one and make it pass. I think that's better than just re-rolling because um, we can always re-roll if uh, if we make a complete whiff of things. So we search the clay pots. Moving aside the pots, you uncover a tablet with a carving of a water drop. As you sweep s sand from the stone, another picture emerges. A box with a star, a diamond, and a moon. Inside and standing next to it, the image of a strong woman. Okay, so we've got a. So we found a carving with a water drop. This is interesting. Now it's perhaps. So we found a carving with a water drop, just like the carving with the diamond. But that's not a good water drop. Well, we'll have to do. And then we found an image of a strong woman. There's a box with a star, a diamond, and a moon. So we got a box with a star. And then we've got the diamond and the moon. So if we take a look again, and then we return back to the doors. So if we take a look again at our doors here, what we've got is a um, box with a star a diamond, 
Oh, okay, it's probably actually the whole box, right? And then that's a star, a diamond, and a moon. So the strong woman is D. So door D equal door D. Come on, Mike. Equals strong woman. Whatever that means. And then we've we've got our our drop and our our water drop and our diamond, which could be. Probably F. I think F. F is the only one with a water drop and a diamond, right? Uh, yeah, there's no diamond there. Diamond, no drop. Diamond, no drop. Diamond, no drop. Diamond and drop and foot. Drop, no diamond. None. Drop, no diamond. Drop, no diamond. Diamond, no drop. Yeah, so it's F. So we're being led towards door F, which is a question mark. We know nothing about that. Or we can go to door D, strong woman. It's possible if we finish searching the room, examining the room, we'll find a clue about what door F might lead to as well. I'm inclined to try door F because you couldn't have known that if you didn't do at least two challenges. Whereas door D... My, I think, I mean, I'm a, I'd like to try door D as well, but on the off chance we only get one, I think we should do F first. Yeah, let's try door F, and then uh, if we have a chance, we'll try door D after. I hope you're in agreement with me, chat. Here we go. So we're going to go through door F. No pressure. Wait, where am I? Oh my god, we're like right at the end of the book here, so. <clears throat> the tunnel broadens. Wait, what? Have I come to the right place? Yeah. The tunnel broadens into an arena. Seats carved into the rock around a ring of dust and dried blood. The floor rumbles and chunks of stone ceiling. The floor rumbles, and chunks of stone ceiling rain onto your startled crew as a creature erupts from the ground. You enter an arena, and a monster attacks you. This is the second time this has happened today. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> okay. I like this soundtrack. It's great. I'm really happy they let me use it. All right, so just let me double check. Uh, yep. So we've got some creatures here coming at us. This should hopefully be... This is marked as easier than the other arena fight, though, so... That's good news, at least. we got here then so creature number one is the cinder cave guard Ooh, seven to hit him and he's got a ton of hit points he doesn't do a lot of damage so he's tough but he's not particularly damaging there it is Cinder Cave Guard. And the other one is Hexic Demon. So he's pretty awful in every way, and I hate him, and we need to kill him first. He does weakness. He's got a ton of hit points. But again, he doesn't do a lot of damage. So I think I think damage is their weakness, actually. If we can if we can hit the Hexic Demon. With our leader, with our captain, we can actually take out all of his damage and his weakness and spill over onto the cave guard and take out its damage as well. And then even though they'll still be chunky to take down, they'll have so many... Um, they'll have so many... They'll have so little damage, at least there's that. I think that's a good idea. 
We don't want to be taking any uh, weakness, because weakness sucks. So. I really like this Wandering Sea map. You know, I, I really feel like this is, is really a nice way to sort of keep track of the game, and it makes you feel really sort of like personalized to your adventure, you know? And you can look back at it and you can be like, oh yeah, remember this is the one where we did all those things, you know? Um, okay, so yeah, we want to start, I think, by hitting the Hexic Demon with the Captain. So it's got five, so we need a four up to... Oh, I, I didn't restore everyone's combat tokens from last time. Whoops. Okay, you're... Yep, 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 yep. And then this one comes back up here. Okay. So. I mean, we captain can get plus one accuracy for the, with two tokens. Oh, we just entered combat. We get two more command tokens as well. Um... So I think, I think let's go ahead and use the right toe of Valard just straight away to give Mara's plus two accuracy token to the captain. I think that that's a good thing to do just overall. Uh, and then we'll take a punt at the Hexic Demon. So we only need a five up to hit him. Fingers crossed. Well, there you go. So we can put out four damage, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to go... This is just going to cripple his effectiveness, essentially. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then we can spill across a damage onto the Cinder Cave Guard as well. Four. There we go. Nice. And, and we've hit Synergy as well, so we can give the Captain's Synergy token to someone who does a bunch of damage. Which should probably be... I mean, again, I don't really think I need a lot of diagonals here. Um, let's give it to Gregory, because he's got his twin daggers here. and I think that that's useful, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. And then the beast attacks back. It does three damage, but we've got block one, so we take two. Aha! I'm almost tempted to attack with the captain again. I can't remember what Gregory's synergy token does. I think it means if you're killed, you can come back. Um, it might have been more. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Let's attack with. Uh, who's got plus one damage? You do, Laurel, actually. But let's attack with. Uh, let's attack with Death's Bell. Let's attack with Audrey, because she's got a plus one damage token on her, and she's got a plus five to hit, and I like both of those things. So, let's go ahead and attack with Audrey. And we'll attack the Cinder Cave Guard, because he's a 7. He's harder to hit. But with Death Spell, I think we should pull it off. Ring, ring, ring! Oh, easily. Nailed it. So we get to do 2 damage. So we're going to hit him in the head. In the head again. He's got a big old head, this guy. So we're just going to go smack, smack. And that activates our Synergy. So we can give our plus 1 damage token to someone who does 3 damage. Let's give it to... Gregory, and then we take two damage in the counter attack, which is fine. And so let's attack now with Gregory and the twin daggers. So he's got plus four to hit on this. He needs uh, three up. A clutch. And then we can give up the plus one damage back to Audrey to do four damage in total. And so we can go. Bam. And bam. And 
I think, let's have a think here now. Who's going to go next? We've got one more attack um, to take out this guy. Hmm, who can do the most damage here? I'm inclined to pick Kasumi, because I think she can hit, and also she can give her plus one damage token to our leader, and we can wipe this beast out with one attack next turn. So yeah, let's do that. Let's go ahead and give it to Kasumi. I don't want to activate Audrey again, because the counterattack will kill her. Um, so, here we go. So we've got plus two accuracy here, so we need a three up. Uh-oh. It's a two. All right, so we'll spend two of these for plus one accuracy on her card here. She's got a plus one accuracy, so that then it gives us the five to hit. And so we can do three damage. So we'll just take out uh, the body and the legs here, so we've got a synergy out of it. And then we can give our synergy token to Sophie. And now it's the beast's turn to activate. So it's going to do two damage. Sorry, you guys can't. Uh, three damage. So you guys see there? Oh, it should have done three damage to Kasumi as well as a counterattack. So three damage on Kasumi and then three damage on someone else. Um, so let's give this these three to... Uh, do you know what? Actually, I think I'll do those. I'll spend one for block two on Zvarm to save Kasumi the three damage. And then we'll give this these three to because he's got so many hit points. And then um, that's that's the beast's attack resolved, so we get all of our tokens back here. And then we'll activate Captain Sophia. She's got the two synergy tokens, so I think this should be a piece of cake. Ah, a one. So I guess I spend these final two command points for plus one accuracy. Which makes it a two plus uh sorry the one becomes a two becomes a three four five with max synergy token so we've just about done it we've done four damage and we spend kasumi's to go up to five damage which is the final three points to kill it Whew. no match for me you horrible beasties get out of here <clears throat> the shadowy creature vanishes in a burst of darkness like an exploding ink bottle. At the far end of the arena, you find a broken tomb, and within it, a totem. Nice! Totem number two! So we gain three coins, which is good because I'm poor. We gain two experience points. So that's six we've got now. We're not far off being able to grab another useful card. And we gain adventure card 45. <laughs> Yogi Bear's like, quit now while you're ahead. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. What do we got here? Is this the right one? Yep. The Stone of Blood. So we can... I don't fully understand how to parse that. It's a Velard totem. I seem to have lots of Velard's things. So we can put a token on it to do one damage. Which is minus one health. I mean, yeah, I guess so, right? Like... Okay. And we have completed... Quest 16. 
which was the tea offerings. So the real question is, can I still come back? It says return to the ship. So I don't see any reason why I can't come back here. I just... Well, I don't have the keyword anymore, though. So I guess I can't come back. Yeah. Because if I don't have the keyword, I'm not going to be able to come back and open the, the shrine door again. So I guess that's it. We'll never find out what the strong woman door was. But I think we made the right choice because we got a totem out of it. Although I would be interested to come back another time and find out what that is. I was writing down here that I got this totem out of it. Um, and maybe one day we'll find out what the strong woman is. But not today. This game would drive Michael nuts. <laughs> he would not be able to live with this. We'll never know. Be like, can we just look it up in the book, please? No! Okay. So I'm down to three quests. I've got the quest... I think... Is that... That's two actions, right? That was the end of the round. Didn't I... No, I started the round in here. I've actually got one more action, right? So, I don't think there's anything left to do at 34, because we stole that map. We haven't done anything with the map. Yeah. So... Where did we get the keyword? Can you get used up keywords again? Uh, no, Difter, and I'll tell you why, because the keyword was assigned to the quest. We got the quest from the forest here, um, by talking to the old man, but they go into this used quests box. So if we go there, we'll be told to search for the quest card, which will be in here. We won't be able to find it because it's in here, so we won't be able to get it again. So you can't just, like, sort of repeat, um, the content in that way. I mean, you could. Like, it's your game. If that's what you want to do, just do it. You know, I'm not going to... Like, I don't think it's going to massively break the game in the sense that uh, we know the outcome would be different because we'd be making slightly different choices. It could be the case that if we'd opened the strong woman door, we could have come back and done the F door because maybe the strong woman door doesn't resolve it in the same way. But if the strong woman door is, like, complete the quest, i.e., like, you can only do one door in the shrine, then we wouldn't technically be able to do the other one but you know um this is also one of the earliest quests in the game so i guess out of all of them repeating this one would probably be one of the easiest to repeat uh, if that was your if you were so inclined okay but with this in mind we've got the ghost child which is going to require us to sail way off to the east we've got the falcon which is the one i'm inclined to do which was the one that, yeah, the ma Anne's map. It leads into the forest on the isle to the east, right? So the isle to the east is clearly this one. So we have to go into the forest over here. Um, so I don't know which of these little points we need to get to because... I think if this is the forest and this is the forest, I'm inclined to think it's this, right? Because this little shrine here was in these red stones. And this is also red stone. So maybe we go to three or 40. Actually, 47 is right here on the forest. But if we get into this bay, we can search both of these. So let's go ahead and take a travel action. We want to ideally move one, two, three, four spaces, which would require a nine up on craft. Is it possible for me to do that? I mean, it is possible. I don't have any command points left, though. <laughs> um, so I think we'll probably have to make it in two turns. Is there anywhere we want to stop off on the way? Also, I'm now bypassing this guy's son again. 
I mean, I suppose I could search 18 while I'm here and then just take the travel action next turn. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's just do one more explore while we're here. I feel like that's a fun idea. Although we are fairly exhausted, fatigued now. Can't cook anything, though. I'll tell you what, let's just do one travel action, and then we'll do another one next turn, I think. Because the chances of us getting four movement in one turn are slim. God damn it. If I'd exhausted Audrey, I could have done it. I didn't know I was going to draw six. Um, okay, that's two spaces. So I guess we go one, two. Over to here. And end the turn. So... We can go back to the start, and we are going to... I can't stay in the quarters where I am. Let's go back up to the bridge, because we got so many useful things used up. Although I'm bummed out I didn't get to use the Alzarian cookbook. I don't get many command points up here either, but never mind, eh? Alright, so we've picked up the engaged card, but I think I'll just... Actually, do you know what? I do like Engaged, so I'm going to hang on to it, and I'm going to put the Focus card back here. Um, we'll get two Command Points, and we can clear off all these other things. Useful things to have clear. Okay. Merchant Raid. A pirate caravel descends upon a fat Lucran merchant vessel. We can help the merchants run with Cunning Six. Help the merchants escape, Cunning Six. Well, that's it. We have to help the merchants. We can't choose not to get involved. <laughs> so, apparently we feel sympathy for them. So, Cunning, I'm not great at. But we've got two here on Kanan. I don't really want to take two ship damage. So, we'll uh, fatigue Kanan. I think we'll fatigue the captain as well. So, that gives us three Cunning. So... Oh, a six. Well, we didn't need to fatigue anyone. <laughs> Damn it. We gained a coin. Grand. Oh, we still have to deal with this nesting monster as well. I haven't used the galley yet, though. <laughs> Gotta remember there's a damn monster in the galley. Okay. So... Everyone is tired now. So let's, uh... I'm at a port as well. I kind of want to do some shopping. I do have one, two, three. I just got money as well. Let's do a shopping action because I might get a good recipe. Or a good weapon. Four, five, six, seven. It just feels like the right time. Alright, what do we got? We got a lantern. It's a one cost. We can use it to add one perception. That's useful. We've got a recipe. Two wheat with three soup and two health. Yep, that's great. A porridge with three fatigue and two health. I like that a lot. Especially seeing as I can make it basically for free with the cookbook. Uh, serpent scale vest. Block three. One cost, one command point. We can uh, bring this over here, actually, so you guys can see these. As I bring them up. Right, we've got Scoundrel's Gear, so you can spend one for either two cunning or block one. It's also good, I like that. We've got Lucran Goggles, two accuracy or two perception, five cost, also great. Mixed salad. One fatigue, two health, one vegetable. Healthy, too. Low in calories. And Eye of Wisdom. Remove a madness. Two savvy, one cost. Well, and when I say cost, I'm talking about the command cost. So we've got a bunch of stuff here that's worth uh, fewer command points. Or that's not a lot of command points to trigger. So I can buy one of these at a two cost discount as well. So I think I'll probably take the porridge. That costs two. 
I also quite like this lantern, but now I'm looking at the, uh, the Lucrin goggles, which are basically the same thing, but better. They're much more expensive, though. I have seven coins, but I can also get a discount of two, so I can essentially spend up to nine. Um, but I don't really want to spend all that money, because I want to save some of it in case I need to go in. To the inn. Um, perception and cunning are my worst, so I'm really inclined to take the goggles or the scoundrel's gear. Although I am slightly better at cunning, so I think I've talked myself into it. Let's take the soup for free and the goggles for five. This serpent scales vest is also extremely useful, but I like my decisions. So you're supposed to put these things under the deck when you're done. Okay, so I've exhausted, I've spent a command point to exhaust the Stone of Bargaining, and then I also spent uh, five, which leaves me with just two. I'm going to put the parge on top of the flapjacks, just because I think I'm much more likely to. Um, yeah. So I guess for my final... I was going to equip repair. But I think for my final card, I'll go onto the Elzeri cookbook and discard this one to use the porridge. So I can get rid of three fatigue. So I'll take one off of Audrey, one off of Raphael. I'll take one off of... Canaan. And then we'll heal two damage as well. From Audrey. No, from the captain. Yeah. Uh, Okie dokie. And then we actually have another action, which will just be travel, I think. So let's go with traveling. Four. That's two more spaces. Brilliant. So we go one into here, where we now have to run a savvy check or take a ship damage. I mean, I'll fatigue Laurent one more time. No, actually, do you know what? Let's not double fatigue him. Let's fatigue Kanan. No, actually, that's stupid. Let's fatigue Gregory. He's got three savvy. This should be fine now, I hope. Just about. That's a five. <laughs> and then we go into here. Now we're in the bay, ready to start exploring the forest next turn. And we'll kick off this turn with a... I mean, I kind of just feel like I walk back and forth between the bridge and the quarters. But I'm kind of okay with that, too. But... but, 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 but bum, Because I want to use the cookbook again. It's so good. So I'm going to go over here. Because food is important, guys. This is a survival game, too. So we get a card. Uh, adrenaline. Plus one damage if this crew member has three damage on him. Oh, that's great. I like that a lot. Let's drop Engaged back into the deck. As much as I like Engaged, um, it's a five. And I don't want too many of them out of the deck. Uh, we're going to get three command. And we can get rid of two things. So that's that. Although the Stone of Bargaining, I'm not going to use again for a while. Um, Alright. And now I'm going to spend one of these. Actually, I'll resolve the other first. Here we go. Maddening Chant. The wind carries evil words from a distant, from distant domain. Blech. Wow. Let me take that again. The wind carries evil words from distant domains. Ongoing. Overcome the chance influence, savvy eight. Gain too low morale and discard this card without gaining the reward. So I can either gain an XP or too low morale. So savvy eight, okay. Right, so that sucks. Let's double fatigue Gregory. That gives us three savvy. But now he's a bit less useful in combat. 
but that's fine. Um, so I still need a 5-up, so I guess we're double fatiguing Laurent as well. And now we should be okay. Just 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So, we gain 1 XP. Oh my god, the fatigue! Well, we've got 7 experience points now, which is good, so we can start to get some more level ups next time we go to port, which is good. Hey, good night, Hagers. Thanks for hanging out and watching. Hmm. <clears throat> the crew are shattered. So I'm going to spend a uh, token here to equip Refine, which I'm going to put on to uh, Laurent, I think. And I'm going to spend um, one more of these over here on the cookbook to cook some more porridge. So I'll get rid of a fatigue on Laurent and a fatigue on Gregory. And uh, we'll get rid of a fatigue on... I guess we'll get rid of a fatigue on the captain. This is a tricky one. No, let's get rid of another fatigue on Laura. I actually think he's very useful for checks. Um... And then we also get to heal two hit points. So I guess we'll get rid of the two on Audrey. Okay. And now we've got two actions. So let's explore Space 47. We get one command point for doing an explore. Ha-ha! <clears throat> uh, you land on the beach near the remains of a campsite. A canvas tent... Oh, hang on. Never mind. Following the map, it literally says here, just move straight on if you have the quest and map. Um, so, never mind. Ignore that. <clears throat> Following the map through a damp forest, you pause in a clearing where the afternoon light rains through the curtain of shuddering leaves. From one of the trees, an enormous beetle falls on Gregory's face. He thrashes as he rips it off, throwing the cat-sized insect on the ground. As it skitters away, a snarl rumbles from the bushes behind you. Uh-oh. Combat time. More giant bugs? Difter porridge is great. Lots of low active, uh, slow release carbs give you energy all day long. Throw a bit of a little bit of honey or some cinnamon in there. I love porridge. Here we go. Blam! A giant panther and his friend, vampiric panther. Holy shit! <laughs> um. Oh no. Regen. Re, regen. Re, oh god, he's got two regens. I'm going to have to take care of that. None of this is good news. The vampiric panther is really hard to hit as well. Well then. Let me get my combat cubes out. And I've entered combat, so I get two command. Okay. I'm running out of quests. I've only got two left. Hmm. I mean, provided I actually finish this quest. Okay, so. Uh... Hmm. 
Okay. Let's start. Let's start with Kanan. And he's got plus one accuracy because he's taken no damage so far. So he's going to attack the giant panther, which is not the vampiric panther. So we need a five up here, and we've got plus two. Ah, oh, nailed it. Okay, so we've done three damage, and we can go diagonally. So we're going to put one here on the mouth. And one here on the body. Oh, I don't get any synergy for that. That's fine, though. So it attacks us back for three damage. And we prevent one of it because we've got block one. So we take two damage onto Kanan. I sometimes think I forget to use that. Now he doesn't get his focused mind anymore, but that's fine, I think. So... Let's move over to our captain next, I think. Oof, that, uh, that vampiric vampire is one tough cookie. And... I wish Marco was a bit more accurate with his terrible frying pan. I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's go ahead and activate the Lucran goggles for plus two accuracy and attack the vampiric vampire, the vampiric panther. I mean, a vampiric vampire is redundant. With um, Marco's frying pan. So we've got plus three, so we need a four up here. I believe in you, Marco. Oh, Marco, no. Um, okay, what am I going to do? I can redraw and hope for something better. I think that's about it, so... Spend one over here to use the gear to draw again. Uh-oh. Not feeling good about this now all of a sudden. Come on, Marco. Ow! God damn it. We used a six, so he nails it. So he only does one damage, which we're going to use down here to cover up this regen and trigger synergy. So we take six damage in retaliation, but we can actually block three of it with the frying pan, which is kind of the point. So we only take three damage on reflection. Then we can give the uh, token to our leader. That token. Is that how we're going to play this? Yes. Yes. So, let's do that. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to put these two over here on the right toe of Valard to give the plus two accuracy token to the captain as well. And now she's going to attack the... Oh, no, we don't need to do that. I mean, we kind of need to do that. So she's going to attack the giant... No, she needs to attack the vampiric panther, actually. Yeah, she does. So we'll go with um, the accuracy token on the captain. So here she goes. We need seven. We've got plus one, but we've also got the accuracy token. Right, so we still need a... Could we do this another way? No. no. Damn it. So that's a two. So it's a three. And get it up to four, five. So it's just a miss. I actually can't do anything about that. It's just a straight up miss. Uh oh, I'm going to get killed. Oh, this is really bad. Um. 
Dun 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 dun. Why did I think this was going to work? Um. I don't know why I thought this was going to work. So I'm going to take, uh, six damage. I block one. Ouch. So I take five damage. I guess I still get to do my one hit in return, even though I'm technically dead now. Um... God, I don't know how that went so horribly wrong over all these tokens. If I'm, if I'm doing a counterattack, can I still spend a synergy token, though? For some reason, I thought I could attack the giant panther and then spill over most of the damage, but I actually can't. Um, Abilities that increase attack damage can be used even if you miss. So I'm going to assume that's a yes in that case. So we've got one damage that spills over as well, which I guess I'll give to Laurent. So I don't think he's doing any attacking. And so I'll return Marco's synergy token as well, which means I get to do one damage plus I can cover up two symbols that don't actually have hearts on. So I'm just going to go straight down the side here and just go... Take out that tail, take out the paws and the head as well. Um, and now I've got one attack left. So this is kind of a bummer. Um, God, that was rough. I guess I might as well spend the accuracy token from Mac as well, even though it doesn't change anything just because... The captain's not going to be able to do anything else this combat. She's wounded now. Um, so with my final attack... We can do... Mac, I think. We're not going to get a synergy out of this, though. But I can't do... So the thing is, if I do... What I want to do is stop that head from uh, on the giant panther. The head space. Um, although, actually, if I hit with Kanan, I can just kill it. It's going to be complete blind luck, though. Oh, God. Uh, it's 50-50, I think. If I roll with Kanan, 50-50, I can just straight up kill it. If I miss, I'll be killed, but I can still take out the weakness spot. So... Yeah, let's do it. Ugh, I don't like this, these odds, but Kanan's going again. Needs a four up to hit that giant panther. God damn it! So that's a miss. So we take three more damage on Kanan. He's knocked out the count. And on his way down, we uh, drop a token onto the weakness spot here. 
So now it's end of round, and the giant panther's going to do three damage to someone, so we'll take it on Moron. And then the vampiric panther's going to do five damage to someone, um, which really sucks. Oh god, this is going horribly. Um, let's put the five damage onto Gregory, I think. Yeah. Okay. Goddamn Panthers, man. This is rough. Okay. I think it's the lack of... Clearly the, the misuse of my command points and the lack of them. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's the way things go. Alright, so we get our tokens back here. And... So, let's start with Kasumi against the Giant Panther. So she's got two accuracy, so she needs a three up to hit it. Okay, so that's three damage, so that takes out the Giant Panther. And it gets us a synergy. Oh no, she can't attack diagonally. Oh, god damn it. Son of a bitch. So we're going to take three damage. Oh, this is rough. Okay, well, we're going to put it like that. Um, and then we're going to take three damage, which leaves us on one. But we did get a synergy, so we can get, hand off this plus one. So I'm going to give the plus one to Gregory. think yeah okay and then I think we just use um actually do you know what? let's give the plus one to Audrey because I forgot she had Death's Bell, <laughs> and that's really, really useful. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Here's how we're going to do this. So... The next attack token goes on to Audrey, and she's going to use Death's Bell to attack the Vampiric. Ah, oh, that doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to attack the Vampiric Panther. So this is plus five against it, so we need a two up to hit it here. No, that's got it. So we do three damage because we're going to use Asumi's token to add two. That's uh, add one. Add one. So we do three damage. So we're going to put one down here on the head, and one down here on the damage. So that gives us uh, the synergy. So we can give our token to Gregory. And then we take three damage. so much damage okay um and then we're going to attack with audrey again she's going to attack the regular giant panther with death spell it's a two which is fine that's still a hit um we do just two damage but uh it's fine because we're going to put one down here on the tail and then we'll spill one over here actually onto the vampiric one so it dies, and we don't take any counterattack. And then actually, I had thought that uh, this would, this plus one token over here would be important, but it doesn't, because we're going to use our final one to attack with the twin daggers on Gregory. He's attacking the Vampiric Panther 
So we need a three up here in order to kill it. It's the last card in the deck as well. Oh my god. Ooh, here we go. Blam! Oh, six. He nails it. So that's uh, three, four damage he can do, actually. So we take them out. But oh my god. At what cost? <laughs> At what cost? The captain's down. Um, Kanan is down. Lauron's almost down. Kasumi's almost down. Oh my god, that was rough. I probably could have done that better, but... Uh, hey, we got through it at least. Okay, so... Let's find out what happens next. <clears throat> The cats are now defeated. You rest to gather your wits and dress your wounds. Gain two meat, two coins, one materials, and one XP. Two meat. Yeah, well, I don't have any command points, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Sorry about that, just a bit of technical issues for those of you who are watching this in the future and for those of you who are here right now. Uh, yeah, uh, this has been happening a lot recently. Uh, it's getting worse, actually. I've got an engineer coming out on Tuesday to talk to me about it because um, it's not the service I'm paying for. But let's not talk about that too much. The point is, um, <clears throat> as the forest thins, you come to a field of skeletons strewn... Oh, God. As the forest... As the forest thins, you come to a field of skeletons strewn across the grass, their bones crushed and mangled. Two statues of eyeless women tower over them, guarding the entrance to a coliseum of crumbling red stone. Could this be my third arena combat today? I'm not really in a good position for combat, so I hope not. I would not disturb them, says Kanan, eyeing the statues. But his warning comes too late. The air snaps with the sound of cracking stone. Watch out! Kanan shouts and grabs Gregory, pulling him backward. The stone women come to life, slamming the ground with heavy fists where Gregory stood a moment before. You scramble past them into the Colosseum, but the statues follow every step shaking the earth. You retreat into a chamber too small for the stone women to enter, but they smash at the walls and entryway until the ceiling collapses on top of you. The dust clears and your crew is alive, but you're trapped. Minus two health. Oh god. Um. Oh my god. I'm so close to everyone dying. I really can't afford fail anything else so i put the two down there on mac but uh things are bleak so we've got two options dig your way out or explore the tunnel at the back of the chamber okay so exploring the tunnel I really don't feel good about not having any way to mitigate anything. I think it's very, very dangerous. In fact, it tells me here. If I dig my way out and I fail, I take five damage, which I can just about cope with. If I fail the perception check, it's perception 10, which I don't think I can actually pass. At best, I've got perception one, two, three, four, five. Which means I would still need a 5-up. If only I hadn't used the Lucre and Goggles for 2 accuracy. 
But um, I don't think I'm going to make that Perception 10 check at all. So I think I'm just going to have to give up on that and do the Strength 5. Um, I can probably do a Strength 5 check. Let's fatigue Raphael. God, I'm going to be so bummed out if I came all this way. And whatever I miss at the back of this chamber. One. I can't use her. I can't use him. So actually, at best, my perception is one, two, three, four. So I need a six. It's so unlikely. I also need to reset the deck. So, no, I think uh, I think that that's that's. Then I take eight damage. Forget now. I can't afford it. So we're just going to do the strength five check. Uh, we'll roll with Raphael. He's got three strength. Um, so we just need a two up, which I think is entirely doable. <laughs> Half the crew is bloodied. This is fine. Okay. So. Give this a little shuffle. And I wish I'd brought more command tokens. Man, it must be so cool to be a good artist, a good game designer, and write music. Ryan Lockett's a true renaissance man, and I'm jealous. Alright, here we go. One more shuffle, and we're done. Okay, so we just need a two up to pass the strength check. This should be fine. Yeah, we did it. So we've managed to dig our way out. It takes hours to dig through the rubble. As you move stone and soil, a bit of metal shines in the lamplight, and you unearth an ornate spear. There's a carved obsidian rock embedded in the shaft. This must be Rattled's spear, says Mac in awe. Says Mac in awe. That rock inside the grip is a totem! A few hours later, you emerge into the dying sunlight and make the trek back to shore. Gain two coins, one experience points, and adventure card 30, Rattled Spear. Complete quest six and return to the ship. Okay, cool. At least we got something out of it. That's the wrong camera. Two coins. Another experience point. Yeah. An adventure. So we completed this one here. And we've got Rattled's Spear, which is adventure card 30. Ooh boy. Two totems in one day. Man, doing quests is the way about to go about it, that's for sure. That's a weapon! Three plus one damage versus the Hectacron. Oh, this is worth having. Okay. So. Oh, shit, was that it? I'm very curious about what was in the back of that cave now, but I guess I'll never know. Uh, wait, did I get one or two XP there? I think I just added one. Oh, it was one. Yeah, that's fine then. 
Hey, Eddie, thanks for joining in, man. Yeah, we've been, we've been having a very productive day, although you've just come at the end of our last productive session, and everyone's super messed up. Like, the crew are all really very much in bad shape, so I think it's time to go to port. I'm just deciding who to give my new spear to. Uh, it's really kind of awesome. Um, and I kind of want to give it to Marco. Because it's kind of just like a better version of what he's already got. Um, I'm also tempted to give it to Laurent. Because it's also kind of just a straight upgrade for him as well. <sighs> really, I want to give this to everyone. Let's give it to Laurent. I mean, it makes sense for the fisherman to have a spear. Is this gonna... Is this gonna stretch all this way? No. The answer is no, it's not long enough. No! Oh, maybe. Just about. Just about. My apologies for the shaky cam here, folks. You can see there we've upgraded his club to Rattled Spear. So he's gained three accuracy and the rest has stayed the same. He also gets plus one damage versus the Hectocron. That's really awesome. So he's going to be more useful in that fight. He's currently also very badly wounded, just like everyone. So we're going to make our way to the nearest port. That was actually action number one. I kind of wanted to do action number three while I was here. Um... But I don't know. I don't really feel like um, I don't really feel like I'm up to it very much right now. <laughs> um, in terms of my crew being well enough. What was that one I just got? Rattled's spear. Uh, Raltold's. Raltold's Spear. Man, I should also be marking where I'm actually getting these totems. Because... Um, I'll forget otherwise. And maybe next time I want to get different totems, right? Isn't that part of the point of the game? Like, you un as you unlock all the different totems, you unlock more cards that you can play with and stuff like that. I mean, not like a massive number, but there's a few cards and things. Like, you can get uh, adventure cards you can start with if you unlock different totems. Where did I get the Stone of Blood? That was... In here, wasn't it? Okay. Apologies for the quiet time while I make my notes. They're not very good notes. I'm not as quiet. So I've only got the two quests left. We've got the ghost child to deliver and the demons to fight potentially. Although I was thinking I might leave the demon one. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of there now, but I need to go back to port, which is over there. Hmm. But I think adventure number three is just going to mess me up. Um, yeah, I think let's go ahead and do a port action. Uh, not port action, I can't. Let's just um, do a travel and sail back to the port. We'll go ahead and fatigue Audrey so we can have three craft. And we've got another three there, so that's six, which gives us two movement, which is not really enough. We'll have to come through here. So we'll fatigue Gregory and get three savvy and we'll check the test which is two which is just enough that gets five to avoid the ship damage one more movement into here we're now in the perfect spot to fight the demons next turn but i don't think we're going to do that because everyone's messed up um <laughs> much too messed up for demon fighting maybe we can come back and do that after 
Yeah. So that's the end of the round. So we're back to the top of the next round. And I think we definitely move back up to the bridge here. We're going to gain an ability card. Have we ever checked on the... Yeah, D Difter, that's what I keep talking about. The um, Uim's son. Uh, I believe he's in here. Um, we never checked on him. That's why I keep talking about the demon thing. Um, because it says he was like, there's demons in the cave or something like that. Alright, so this is a special recipe. When you cook a recipe, also restore one health. Well, that's pretty good. Um, that's a five. I don't really want to equip a five. Oh, I do have these this bandage, though, and I kind of want to equip that. I'm only going to get two command, though, which is not very much, honestly. I really was feeling the lack of command in that last fight. Um, I really wish it had more command points. Um, card? What am I doing for stuff? Let's go ahead and cook some spicy gumbo before we continue. So we'll give up this and this. And we'll make a spicy gumbo. So we'll get rid of Gregory, a fatigue on Gregory, a fatigue on Audrey, and a fatigue on Raphael. And we can heal three hit points. So let's go ahead and do that on the captain. Okay, and now we're going to do... God, we've still got nesting monsters in the galley. Now we're on to the hard cards. Ugh. Possessed crew. Crew members are not acting like themselves, running around the ship, spilling cargo, and causing mayhem. Gain one madness. Also, each time you draw a fate, one to three, not in combat this turn, gain a madness. Marco makes a broth of garlic and herbs. At one whiff, ghostly creatures burst from the inflicted crew members. It takes a day or two for the crew to fully recover. Craziness. What's, I've never had a madness before. What does it do? Challenge. Madness. Challenge minus one health. I guess that means every time you're used in a challenge, you use it, lose a hit point. Um, let's give it to Marco. He's going a bit mad, but he can actually make some food to cure himself of this madness. So we might even go ahead and do that. Um, we have to pay a food for it, but that's fine. So actually, let's just start with that. We'll pay, go down here. We're going to pay a food, which is a meat. And we cure a health and also the effect token. Um, I'm not going to do any other challenges this turn because I don't want to draw any fate cards at all. I'm going to have to do one, though. Shit because I need to sail over here to the trading post to do the port action. I, I'm just, I'm feeling like the crew is not in good shape to go fighting demons to save the Pearl Diver, so. Um, I don't want to have to stop here where I can't do anything else useful, so I'm going to fatigue Audrey again. Hopefully it's not a one to three. Yeah, sugar. Oh God, that only gives me four. Okay, so I think I can discard special lessons here to get one additional craft. Um, so that gives me the five I need. No, wait, that's... Wait, two, three, four, five. No, I've got five. What am I talking about? That's more than enough to get the two movement. But someone else is going to get madness token. Um, um... Right, who's no good at tests? Marco, you you didn't quite your soup didn't quite work, Marco. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, Difter. Um For checking the rule there. Okay, so we've got the two movement over here, and now we can do the port action with our final action. So I'm gonna pay the four coins to activate the in. We're just going through the port. We're, we're going to do some leveling up here as well, I think. So four coins. Everyone gets two health back. 
and also gets rid of a fatigue. Like everybody's got fatigue and damage, so this is a good thing. Got two off the captain, two off of Laurent, two off of Mac, two off of Kasumi, two off of Kanan, which leaves him with three. Two off of Raphael, two off of Marco, two off of Audrey, and then two off of Gregory, which is Okay. Jeez. Uh, now we can pay three materials to repair the ship, so let's do that. Box. Eh. Um, might as well heal all the rooms and just leave the damage on the hull. Um, now we can pay a coin to fully heal a crew member. Um, I'm sort of tempted to do a little bit of that. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do because I I don't want to spend all my money, but I mean, that lot of good. It's gonna be having one coin anyway. But I'm gonna pay one coin to heal Kane and the rest of his damage, just because he's got the focused mind ability. He's fully healed. Um, and now we can do some leveling up. That's exciting. I've got nine points to spend. Now I'm trying to remember. We, we sort of shortlisted a bunch last time of good good uh, good cards here. Um, so I mean that's I've, I've now come to fully realize just how clutch this is. Um, in combination with my singing necklace actually I kind of really want plan ahead. So I'm very tempted by plan ahead on uh, the captain. Um, what else we got here? Restore one health to the captain when captain activates a synergy token. That's also really good, but it's more expensive. Captain Odessa may have up to three fatigue tokens. That's also very good. Um, when Raphael draws five plus fate, you have plus one damage and gain one block. I do like that. Um, can take a damage to give another crew member one block. That kind of works well with um the adrenaline card but it's the thing is i haven't equipped adrenaline yet and by the time i equip it it's probably going to be time to reset them when Raphael places splash damage only one of the damage oh that's really good i keep i saw this and then i kept thinking in my mind that i had it when i didn't uh so i got confused uh mac at sword master that's also good um Mac at Survivor, one block at the end of round, enemy attack. World Lore, once per challenge, Mac can take a damage to redraw a fate card. Oh, that's so good, too. All of these are great. Remove one low morale from the crew member when you use the deck. Yep. Um, Baker, when a player cooks a recipe, restore one extra health. When a player cooks a recipe, they may substitute one ingredient for another. Plus two accuracy with the pistol. Oh, that would also be great, actually. At the end of combat, restore one health to any crew members with zero health. That would have been great at the end of the panther fight. I might have actually been able to do that perception check. In one command, when you use the bridge... That's also great, because I use the bridge all the time. You may draw an extra search token when you use the deck. Ignore the damage on the token, if any. Oh, that could be really useful, too. Um, rare catch. When you use Laurent's first crew ability, draw fate. Yeah, and then maybe get an extra meat. Uh, counter. If Kasumi misses, she does an extra damage. We got talented. She's going to have three ability cards equipped. Jury rigged engine. If you use order to travel, add two to fate. If the total is nine, ignore hazards. Oh, that would be also great. Um, when she hits an enemy, she may make it swap positions with an adjacent enemy before placing damage. So, I kind of really want to take plan ahead. Um, it just means I can't take anything else. Oh no, I have ten experience. What am I talking about? Oh, damn it.
Oof. I could take this and a four cost as well. <sighs> Damn it, I really want this one. Um, no, not that one. This one, jury rigged, because that'll help me get around a lot faster. But, like, I could travel four spaces. But uh, I can't afford them both. So I'm kind of tempted just to gain um, this one, because I use the bridge all the time. And that gets me an extra command token, which will help me uh, equip equip uh, the event cards faster when they reset. Because they're going to reset again in a bit. Um, yeah, I've talked myself into it. We'll take Plan Ahead and Old Sailor. I think these are a really good combo. Command tokens are just so good. So... We get plan ahead over here. Now she's got cunning on her, which is good. I guess I got a lot of savvy now. That's the end of all my experience points. Wah, 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 wah. Awesome. So that's the end of that turn. We have been streaming for three hours. I'm trying to decide. I, this feels like a good stopping point, but I kind of don't want to stop. I kind of want to go a little bit longer. Um, so let's do one more round. Maybe two. Okay. So we start by... Right, getting rid of Possessed Crew for a start. That's done. And then I guess we head over to the quarters, actually, because we get to... We're going to draw a card. Uh, refine. That's fine. That's always a good one to get out of the deck. We'll get three of these command tokens, and we can clear off two things, which is great, because we need to... Marco to get rid of his madness. Um, and we can do that right away. I think we can just put one down here. We can pay a food... Get rid of this madness and also heal a hit point somewhere. So let's get rid of this one on Audrey, I think. And now we're going to draw a card. No. One event card. Blood Moon. As the Crimson Moon rises, a wave of madness spreads. Uh, withstand the madness. Savvy 9. Oh my god. What is it? <laughs> Ghosts and Blood Moons. That's what we're doing now. This is your doing, isn't it, Eddie, ever since you showed up? Yeah, Difter, it's nice that all the, all the level up ability cards seem really good. Uh, the good news is I've got sh shed loads of savvy. Let's, aggregate, uh, let's do one on Gregory and one on Laurent. That gives us six basic savvy. Um, we could do one on Kanan as well, but I feel like three up is a pretty good, pretty good odds. Blam! My life is misery. Um, let's uh, go ahead and use Kasumi to redraw it. Because it is a one, so she can re-roll that. Blam! There we go. Four. Nailed it. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do a little, uh, little bit of movement. So I guess we'll fatigue Audrey to get a base of three. And we reveal a six. Wow. So now we've got nine. Oh, we could do four movement. Okay. So we were going to go back over here. That's only two spaces away. With four movement, we could make our way across the map towards Port Haven, potentially. Um, and do this ghost quest instead. So let me know what you think, chat. Should we... Head, we're here, just back over here, or should we try to get to Port Haven now that we've got all this movement? I mean, we could potentially get, like, halfway there. Uh, 
because I don't know how I feel about like I don't know how bothered I am about going to do the demon quest or is the ghost child I'm more inclined to do personally but I think that uh, I sure would love to hear your input weighing in so I'm just gonna do it at one. How many points of movement is it actually though? Because I mean if we cross off the map here as well we can actually jump up higher so we might even be able to get there in one fell swoop. I'm gonna do it guys. Let's go find this ghost. Yes a, a good point. Difter points out that uh, we've had uh, a bunch of madness on the boat uh, ever since this ghost came on board so it's entirely possible that it's the ghost's fault which seems legit. So I'm gonna move, so I've moved one off, so that's one movement to here. I'm gonna spend another movement to go north one, which brings us well, either here or here. So we'll come into here, and the good news is, because we got a nine, we can actually ignore all of this danger. And that's actually just two points of movement we've used so far. So we can go three, four and ignore these sharp rocks as well which means we're now within one of port haven um it is slightly unfortunate that i just did a port action and now we're going to another port but you know never mind it um so we've got one more action so we could just roll into port haven or we could try a random exploration of something around here did I actually ever explore that? No, I didn't. The only thing I can look at in this space is 129. Um, so we could just take a punt and have a random explore. Or we could roll into Port Haven, see what's going on. I mean, roll in and be ready to explore next turn. Yeah, screw it. Let's do that. So one more travel action. It's a five, which is fine. That's more than enough to get in there. Okay. We want to get out of here we're gonna to have to brave these rocks again and it's time for another turn so let's begin with i think let's begin with actually doing a uh, a deck action because we are running low on food and everything i think this next tie search tile is going to suck i don't think there's any way around that we've also got fishing we can use Laurent's fishing ability as well here. Oh, actually, we could just go back to the bridge, though. I don't need to, really. No, we'll do the deck. Okay, so we'll get two command. We can check a... Larry Thomas says, love the playthrough. I'm on my fifth campaign. Hey, Larry, thanks so much for your kind words. Fifth campaign. I totally get that bug, man. I'm already thinking about what else I'm going to do the next time I play through and how I'm going to do things differently. I've barely touched this map as well. Someone commented on the first uh, video I did that they, they played through it. They saw maybe about 10% of the content, but they didn't feel at all inclined to do it again. Um, uh, Dr. D commented that, actually. Um, I can't imagine that. I'm so... Like, I'm thinking about how I could do it better, or how I could use the knowledge I gained to sort of level up faster, maybe get into some of those dungeons and see what those are like. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Okay, so I took my two command, and now I'm going to do my search token, which I think is going to be a lot of damage to the boat and some money. If I've tracked these rightly. Yeah. So that's two damage to the ship and a coin. But that's fine. So let's go ahead and check where the damage is going to be the first one is a four no don't give me all the four ups now i need these in a minute and the second one is a one which is the hull so i can put this wherever i want we'll put it over here in the quarters okay now i can check a card as well for laurent's fishing four up damn it i could put down two here to get plus one but then i just gain a meat which I can do on Laurent's ability anyway, so 
That's fine. Um, oh well. Let's check this now. Event card! Cryvern attack! A huge Cryvern swoops down upon the ship. Fight it off. Strength 8. Or outrun it. Craft 9. You must move the ship. It looks like we're fighting it off because I don't want to move the ship. I'd have to move out here into the rocks again. And run over the risk of taking more damage and I'd have to move back. So strength 8. We're going to have to go ahead and fatigue Raphael. That gives us 3 strength. Does anyone else have a strength bonus? No, but we do have the adrenaline card. So I think we fatigue poor Marco. And that gets us up to strength four, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Blam! Okay, it's not great. It's not great. <laughs> Ah, oh, God, my command points. I should have fatigued someone else. Three, four, yeah, that's six out of the eight we need. So I guess we put two onto Mac to give us plus one, and we discard the strength card as well. Doesn't feel good about using Mac's ability here, but I feel terrible about it, but, you know. Um... It's better than failing and losing three health and taking three ship damage. So we fought off the Cryvern just. Um, I've only got one command point left. And I don't really know what to do with it. I think I'll save it for now just in case I want to do activate something. And we stop off in Port Haven. So let's start with a Port Haven Explorer, which will give us one more of these. Whoa. Here we go. So it's 180. Do you know what I really wish they'd done, actually, which would have been really nice? It's like a really lush printed version of this binder. Like, I would have paid another, like, 20 bucks or something to get, like, a hardback with a really nice printing and spine. I would have definitely done that. <clears throat> Uh-oh. A small port town nestles between the mountains at the end of a long bay. Its buildings are constructed out of a confusing mix of materials. Wood, brick, and stone thrown together haphazardly with no logic behind it. As the manticore drifts closer to the, and the docks come into view, you can see several fingers standing and waiting. As you drift closer still, you're surprised to see a small group that includes a mython, a walking skeleton, a giant cockroach, a yeti, and a rat creature. Your crew takes turns passing the spyglass back and forth, gawking at the monsters. We should attack first, says Mac. Surprise them before they have a chance to act. Hold on says Gregory. Maybe they just want a quick chat. We should at least try talking to them first. So I've got two options here. Greet the monsters or attack the monsters. Um, I don't really want to attack them. Because I only have two command. Although I'm going to get four if I engage in combat of the singing necklace and my plan ahead. <sighs> See, the I kind of want to talk to them in case they want to talk. It does seem like an odd mix of monsters. On the other hand, in my experience, um, I mean, I did manage to talk those pans into peace. That did work out. But... And if we can resolve things without conflict, surely that's preferable. Ah, oh, let's talk to them. If we wind up fighting, we're going to wind up fighting anyway. You call out a greeting from the deck of your ship. The Mython is the one who responds. Hello, strangers! His deep voice booms, easily carrying across the distance. I am the Wayfinder. There are no weapons allowed in Port Haven. Leave your weapons aboard your ship, and we will welcome you to our town and answer your questions. The 
This is ridiculous, shouts Raphael. Look at you all. You basically have weapons built in. I mean, the teeth on that thing. He gestures, pointing towards the snow beast. Magna uses her teeth to catch fish, responds Wayfinder. No one here means you harm. These rules are because outsiders often mean to harm us. So we can agree to give up our weapons or refuse to give up our weapons. I'm going to agree. And see what happens. If this is the end, thanks all of you for coming on this playthrough with me. It's been a ton of fun. As you disembark, the skeleton hands you a bouquet of flowers. Welcome, says Wayfinder. I will show you the town and explain our history. You walk along Wayfinder as he explains. Most people here are what you would call monsters. Creatures created by the gods to be mindless weapons enthralled to the gods' will. But when Raltold forced the gods to sleep, their power was weakened. And for the first time we awakened, suddenly able to choose our own path. You pass by a small portside market each stall manned by a different monster, and then through a gate into the city proper. The buildings are as strange as the residence. One is built of what looks like cooled lava. Another is entirely the hull of a massive sailing boat, turned upside down and converted into a house. Wayfinder continues, With new freedom, many choose violence, continuing on a familiar path. Many others here were lost. <coughs> It's not COVID, it's just Wayfinder's voice that's hard to do. <clears throat> Many others were lost, not knowing how to choose. I led them here. I forged the path for those of us who did not wish to live and die in pain. All are welcome here, if they do not choose violence. Many humans, when they see us, choose violence. They are not welcome here. Wayfinder stops walking abruptly, and you nearly run into him. He looks at you with fiery eyes. You are not from this world. You seek the totems to wake the gods. They have promised to send you home. But the gods are not as they seem. I have spoken enough for now. Explore the town. Rest. Find me when you wish to choose a new path. Port Haven is a sanctuary for monsters who wish to live lives free of violence. Wayfinder warns you that the gods are not what they seem, and asks you to come find him if you wish to choose a new path. Yeah, I haven't even had the option to, uh, to drop off my ghost quest. Um, I presume that will come up in due course. For now, I get I gain quest 104. God, this is fascinating. Imagine if I just chose chosen to attack them, you know? That would be uh, a whole nother thing. A whole nother outcome. I wonder what would have happened. Could I just never come to Port Haven? So we've got keyword monster. Drop your weapons. We answered we entered Port Haven peacefully. So that just goes up here with my other keywords, because it's not a quest. Now we have to go to 109. Well, uh, 179. Aha! A small town nestles between the mountains at the end of a long bay. Its buildings are constructed out of a confusing mix of materials. Wood, brick, and stone thrown together haphazardly with no logic behind it. The residents of Port Haven are similarly a mixture of disparate parts. Average looking people from all nations of the Wandering Sea mingle alongside monsters of every variety, bizarrely going about normal routines. Nearby, a sea serpent haggles with a mythen vendor over the price of fruit. A floating eye flies past you, not paying you any attention. So we can visit the market, we can speak to Wayfinder. We can search for the twin Mythans, uh, which we can't do because we don't have that keyword, sorry. And we can follow Kanan when he wanders off, which is exactly what we're going to do. So Kanan's obviously being given some 
clues here? You find Kanan in a dark alley, talking again to the Phantom Child. When he hears you approach, he looks up at you. I'm sorry, Captain. This child, he needs someone to take care of him. I'm going to stay here with him. It's what he wants. So we've got two options here. Tell Kanan to remember his real family, or drag Kanan away. So I'm going to tell Kanan to remember his real family. Which is cunning seven. So let's fatigue uh, the captain. She's got two cunning. Can Kanan participate in this challenge? It literally doesn't say he can't. And the reason I'm thinking this is because earlier, when I picked up the ghost child and I had the option of dragging him away, it said Kanan cannot participate in this challenge. So presumably, this is Kanan engaging his own wisdom to maybe not fall prey to this child. So this is cunning seven, and I've now engaged four cunning, so I need a three up. Hey, nailed it. <clears throat> You're right, my own children. What will they do if I never return? But what of this poor child? What will become of him? Even if, as you say, he is a ghost, he doesn't deserve to be alone. What was that? The strange whispering starts again as Kanan listens raptly to the shadowy figure. Thank you. I wish you well, child. I only wish I could have helped more, says Kanan. The shadow flickers and disappears. He said he understands why I must leave and that he'll be all right on his own. He thanked us for taking him this far. Kanan holds up a fistful of coins. He wanted to pay for his passage. Well, we gain three coins and complete the quest. All right, now we're down to just one quest. So maybe we should go talk to Wayfinder and see what he's got to say, because he might just give us a new quest. And another path? Other than waking the gods? That seems crazy. Literally my first ever campaign, and I'm like... Screw your story, I'm going to unlock this other crazy story. All right, complete that and gain three coins. I feel like we maybe should have got a little more for that, but um, never mind. Okay. Yeah, so I guess that's it. So we're going to go and speak to Wayfinder. Wayfinder's office is in a building of white stone overlooking the bay. The office itself has a large picture window from which the docks are fully visible. If we are ever attacked, I would like to be the first to know, Wayfinder explains. Those who dwell here live in fear that the gods will awaken and reassert their power over us, removing our ability to choose. <clears throat> you live in fear that the gods will sleep forever and you will be trapped here, far from your homes. There is one solution to both our problems. The gods would have you believe that their power is absolute and infinite, but I have learned much since they first slumbered. There were gods before them, long forgotten, long dead, who have the same power. The power may be absolute and infinite, but the gods are not. Strip the power away, and they are mortal beings. I have discovered a way to remove the gods' power without killing them, turning them mortal. <coughs> then I can channel their power into creating a, a portal back to your home before letting the power dissipate completely, spread out across the world, so that no one person has too much. To do this, we will need the totems of the Forgotten Gods, and I need your help to find them. Gregory sits forward in his chair. Why can't you take some of your people and search for these Forgotten Totems yourself? A fine question, says Wayfinder. The people here wish to live in peace, and I fear it's possible that violence may be needed to gather the totems. I cannot ask them of the, this of them. 
but I can ask this of you. If you help me, we can both get what we want. So we gain quest 99, and then we have the option to agree to help or not. Man, do I even have time for this? Feels like I'm 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 very short of time. And I've gotta now sail across the world. Oh, that's not gonna work. Another path. Wayfinder showed us another path to defeat the gods by removing their power and turning them mortal. This way, by channeling their removed power, we can still go home. So I think I'm going to agree to help, because I like this quest chain, even though I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to have time to actually do it before the game ends. <clears throat> I thank you, says Wayfinder. I will join you on your journey to find the Forgotten Totems, and I will share what I have learned about where they might be found. Gain Adventure Card 15 Wayfinder, gain quests three of them, and then return to the port haven oh my god well i was complaining we didn't have enough quests and so now we've got shed loads and wayfinder has joined us on our journey well i guess that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of this playthrough completing these quests that wayfinders heard of There he is, Wayfinder. So he can give us a cunning or he can do a damage for one hit. Cool. Wayfinder the Mython joined the crew. We've also got quests. Quests, quests, quests. Oh my god, this is not how I expected this to go. You probably would never come here unless you had a good reason to. Like, the only reason we're here is because of that ghost child. But it's so out of the way. And it's behind these massively jagged rocks as well. The Totems of the Forgotten Gods. The Totem of Oikar was last seen in the private antiques collection of a rich businessman in Lucran City. Lucra City. God, where the hell is that? Lucra City. Please don't be very far. Oh, it's not far. It's just down there. So that's directly south of us. Although it's a bit tricky to get to. <clears throat> the totem of Lu Edar was stolen by Orphash long ago. And may still be somewhere in his tower. What? The tower? The tower of Orphash? Does this mean all the totems I've gathered so far are useless? Should I have come here first instead of right at the end? I say the end. I'm almost a... I go. Oh God. Um. Okay. The totem of Velra was lost in the northern ice flows when a fight between Velra and her sister Aura caused the seas to shift. Oh God. These are shots in the dark. Hey, Ralph. Yeah, we're still going a little bit. So we're heading back to Port Haven now anyway. Um, so go. I think we'll just head to the market. That's the last thing we can do before we... There's some other stuff you can do in the town, but I don't have the right keyword. I will make a note of it, though, just in case I save the game again. Um, okay, we're uh, Uh, that's true, Difter, but these are the totems of the Forgotten Gods. So the thing is, the totems we've been collecting are to bribe the Slumbering Gods to send us home. But these totems are from, like, the set of gods that existed before the Slumbering Gods. Like, all of the names mentioned on these cards, Velra, Veltra, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Velra, 
Luedar um, and Oikar are not the same set of gods from the totems we've been collecting, I don't think. I don't know, so we're going to have to see what happens. In any case... The market is full of haphazard booths, selling a variety of haphazard products. Raphael stops at a booth run by a skeleton, examining a collection of jeweled swords. Careful, says Gregory. You never know what might be cursed. Audrey is fascinated by a display of little clockwork mice. Liverpool. 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 <laughs> the bee or beetles the bee oh, oh god this is not gonna go well <clears throat> your work is very oh god no I come back to me on my liverpool accent i promise i'll practice it liverpool your work is very delicate she says to them that that was not it right she says to the massive rat creature that runs the stall Despite how fantastical the items are, they're all being sold for surprisingly low prices. You're not sure whether that's because Port Haven is so far out of the way, or and so they have few new customers to sell to, or because the creatures haven't fully grasped the nuances of human currency. Draw five market cards. You may purchase any of them at a minus one cost. Oh, cool. And then return to Port Haven, but then we're just going to return to the ship, so. Nice. Let's see what we got. Five cards. Um. So we've got uh, a cup of tea. Tea. So you can restore one fatigue, cost one. So we can actually take that for free. <laughs> um, we got biscuits and gravy, four fatigue, six health, and minus one morale. That's a great recipe. We should definitely grab that. It's only three as well. Zokmir gloves. So that's got block one on it. It costs one. So can we just take these one cost cards for free? Because it says you can purchase any of them at a cost of minus one. Uh, grilled sausage. Four fatigue and two health. It's a two cost card. And shrunken head. Two cunning costs four. So I've got five money. I mean, I think I just got lucky. You may purchase any of them at minus one cost. I presume that, yeah, because uh, it would say you may purchase one of them at minus one cost if it was just one. So I think that the idea, so I think I just got lucky drawing these two one costs. So I might as well take both of these for free, even though I think they're actually kind of rubbish. Um, and then we've got these ones here. So I think I probably want these two. They cost two and three respectively because of the discount. So I can actually trigger my uh, stone of bargaining here to take the biscuits and gravy for free. Because that's three down to two down to nothing. Um, and we'll just move over the singing necklace and drop it in here. And then I'll pay uh, three for the shrunken head and get the, uh, the cunning bonus on that for future use, I think. All right. Um, I guess we'll just return this to the back of the deck. And we've still got one more action. So I guess we're going to have to figure out what on earth we're going to do with our... Uh, with our time here. This tea is kind of garbage, but I'll just leave it over here. Um, Eddie says he's having some issues with the stream, but Difter says it's fine. So.
Uh, you're right about the meat and veg being easy to come by, actually. Maybe I should have thought of that, but... Never mind. Uh, so I've got one more action. So let's take a look at these, these three quests we've got to do. Because we've basically got to figure out where the hell these are. Um, so, I mean, we've got the another path, but that's really just do these three quests, right? So... We've got part one, which is the Totem of Oikar. It was last seen in the private antiques collection of a rich businessman in Lucra City. So that's actually fairly straightforward to do, because we know where Lucra City is. It's here, right? Um, we've got this one, which says, The Totem of Luedar was stolen by Orphash long ago, and may still be somewhere in his tower. So, I guess we're looking for the Tower of Orphash, but I can't see that anywhere. I don't think I've come across anything like that. Um, Totem of Luadar was stolen by Orphash long ago and may still be somewhere in his tower. I mean, I have no idea what that could be. Just kind of a bummer. And the last one is this one. The Totem of Velra was lost in the northern ice flows when a fight between Velra and her sister Aura caused the seas to shift. So we presume that that must be somewhere in this northernmost reach because there's the Aura Township up there. Um, so, I mean, I think we're closest to the Aura Township. So I, well, actually, no, that's not true. We're e pretty much equally close to the Aura Township and... And as we are to, um... Hey, this doesn't have a number on it. What happens if you try to sail north here? Can you just not sail north here? I'm trying to think if I saw a keyword tower anywhere, but I don't think I have. Hmm. So I guess we've got two choices. Either we sail south to go check out the rich men in Lucra City, or we sail north. Either way, we're going to have to wind up going around. So I, I don't know where this tower is. So I think that we'll just have to figure that out in due course. I don't think, I don't know if we'll find it really, to be honest, team. But we can keep an eye out for it while we, we sail around. What do you guys think? Down south to the rich businessman? Or up north to the Aurora Township? I think we should do Lucre first. And I'll tell you why. Because this deck is going to exhaust pretty soon. Um... And then everything's going to reset. Actually, do you know, we could probably get to Aura before it resets. So maybe we should do that first. Because I'm thinking we should do the harder thing before the deck resets. So maybe, actually, let's go north. I'm feeling north. What are you guys feeling? Eddie, I think you could probably get uh, this game at retail and it would be fine. North will get more dangerous. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Ralph. So I think we head north, because we've probably still got about four or five rounds. And I reckon we can get up north and do that before the deck resets. Um, yeah, exactly, Difter, as well. If we head south, we'll probably need some stuff to sell or some money to trade with the rich businessman. Unless he has a quest. If he's got a quest and it's like, go north, I'll murder him. But... Yeah, let's head north then. So for our second action this round, we're going to take a travel action. Um, 
Do I want to do a port action before we leave, actually? I can't afford it. So I should do a cooking action, though. So let's activate the Alzarian cooking book. Oh god, and use the last of my food. I'm so close to the auction house. <laughs> Maybe we can go down to the auction house and sell off these two uh, artifacts. Um, okay, so I'm going to cook... Uh, I guess I'm going to cook the spicy gumbo. So I don't really have the means to make the biscuits and gravy right now. So, here we go. Spicy gumbo. It's the last of the food team. Enjoy it while it's good. At least we're going to reset the search deck next time. We need to do a search on deck so we can get some more food and things, I, I hope. Uh, so we can heal up three hit points and get rid of three fatigue as well. So we'll get rid of um, the fatigue off of our people with really good stats. People with good craft, actually, who can get us traveling. And uh, I guess Gregory's health? Okay, now we're just going to straight up fatigue Audrey again and head off sailing. And we got a 5, which is 8. So we could discard this to go up to 9, so let's do it. Let's just get moving. We've got a long way to go, and this will also let us ignore the dangerous stones here as well. So we can go 1, 2, 3 as we sail off here. So we come out here, and then four takes us north into the great north. So we can go up here, here, or here. So let's go into here. We can ignore the dangerous terrain there as well. And here we are in the Aura Township, the very northern reach of the map. The question is... We've also got a, uh, uh, the Fishbone Vault dungeon here, but let's not get distracted. We're on a different mission here. So, looking around for towers as well. The Tower of Orphash. I have no idea where that could be. The Totem of Velra was lost in the northern ice flows when a fight between Velra and her sister, Ulra, caused the seas to shift. So I think our probably our best bet is just to head over to the Aura Township. And see if anyone knows anything about that. Because everything else here just looks completely... Um, I mean, I'm just... All I'm seeing is rock and ice. And that's it. You know, I'm not seeing anything else that sort of screams out to me. Like, this is... We got a little dock here. We got some boats over here. Just tons more ice. The ice flows that we can explore. Uh, up here and also on the other side over here but other than that it just looks like rock there's a little port or something here a little town here i think that's all we got so where we start up here could be anyone's guess where they caused the earth to shift maybe i don't know none of this looks like shifting earth to me there's arrows here, but we can't go north from here. There's nowhere to go. It'd be kind of cool, actually, if you could sail around the world and come back in the bottom. Exactly, Ralph, yeah. We've already done the reset once, so this will be reset number two. But fortunately, we got a good roll there on the movement. Um... And so now we have to figure out just what exactly we're going to do now we're up north. I have no idea where to start. I think going to Aurora Township and just uh, seeing if that triggers anything or we can find some stories or maybe some quests start adventuring around. That might be useful. Uh, we have stopped in a space of that little town there as well. So maybe we can just head into this little space here, see what's going on at this little port or whatever. But um, I think we're going to have to do it in the next episode. I think we're all out of time for tonight. It is 3 o'clock in the morning here, so I think it's time to wrap up. But, oh boy, I'm having so much fun playing Sleeping Gods, you guys. Um, and so, thanks so much to everybody who's uh, still watching, who's ca ca catching up on the episodes in the future, and we will, of course, do more Sleeping Gods in due course. Um, but, uh, I don't know, this week's going to be pretty busy for streaming. We're going to, Michael and I are going to be carrying on with Resident Evil 7, Chris and I are going to be catching on with, uh, catching up with 
uh, a game maybe or something and there's going to be more streaming on Thursday and of course Resident Evil as well 8 comes out on Thursday night slash Friday so I'm really excited for that but uh, I'm super enjoying this too and this has been a nice antidote to the, the stress that is Resident Evil so uh, thank you so much if you are enjoying this series please do leave a like on the video leave a comment down below letting me know what you think if you have some idea about where the sleeping gods where the forgotten gods totems are um, if you've been catching up on the series and you saw something in the series that I might have forgotten about, let me know in the comments. But no spoilers, please. If you've done it before and you know how this goes, don't leave any uh, spoilers down below. I'd prefer to, to figure it out with uh, chat uh, through what we've experienced in the, this play session. But um, we will, of course, be... And don't worry, guys. All of this uh, game will be available at retail. I don't think there were any Kickstarter exclusives, just fancy fancy box art like you know if you got the kickstarter you get the shiny shiny box with the indented uh um you can see uh, the, i don't know if you can see the hectocron is 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 slightly indented but i think like that that's it right you're gonna be able to pick all of this stuff up at retail i don't know maybe you can't get the 3d goods but that's also fine like um i'm pretty sure everything else is available at retail so in due course in fact, very, very soon. And, and of course, there was a request from the, my patrons as well. I asked them, um, should I make a setup and rules video? What would you guys like to see? And it was a very close tie, but in fact, Sleeping Gods was the winner. And I'm surprised they voted for it because Rodney did one and also Meeple University did one. But now I'm going to do one too. So I'll do a rules video for this as well. If you guys want to um, buy it at retail, you can always check out the rules explanation, which I'm going to make for it. Which will be happening in due course so remember just remember you can comment on the video and you can like on the video to help me out you can also subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications if you want to find out what happens next in our adventure and make sure you don't miss it live so you can have some input too that will be fun for me and fun for you but of course a major major thank you to all those patrons that support the channel and also a thank you thank you to red raven games who let us use their wonderful music for this live stream so make sure you check that out as well. And if you do pick up the game at retail, you can always go buy that audio soundtrack from them, I think, on their website. I mean, I'm sure you can. Um, so that would, uh, of course, help support them as well. But for now, that's it. And, oh yeah, get a big table. Yeah, it takes up a lot of table space. So, um, you know, you'll need some table space as well when you do pick up the game, if that's something that interests you. If in, interests you. And I may be doing a sort of a more formal review of it at some point. But for now, I'm very, very much enjoying it. And I'll see you all in the next stream. Thank you so much, everybody, for all your wonderful support and for coming on this adventure with me. Good night, and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.